बिफोर यू मैं दैट वॉज इन माई माइंड की उसको कर देना शुरू वेलकम के बाद ना सर कॉन्डोलेंस कर देंगे हाँ वेलकम के बाद तो सुनील के बाद कर देंगे सुनील के बाद इमीडिएटली सुनील के बाद आई थिंक कंडोलेंस सबसे पहले होता है क्या नहीं पहले वेलकम कर लो सो दैट पीपल असेंबल एंड देन वी डू द कंडोलेंस यस 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 तो वी आर लाइव वी आर लाइव सर सो कैन वी कैन वी रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर सुनील सिंह टू गिव द वेलकम एड्रेस Uh, Dr. Good Nagin. evening, uh, good evening, everybody. Nagendra, would you like to say something, or I should start? Yeah. At the outset, I like to welcome you all in this meeting of the Boss ARC. Uh, it is done by done for the uh, PGs, and it is done by the PGs only for and done both. So, and I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Pranav Ranjan sir, Dr. Bhuvuti here. Uh, he is. Uh, Uh, our uh, secretary pranav sir is his treasurer and uh, dr sunil who is going to address welcome address and he is a uh, ex secretary and uh, senior member member of the academic research committee we have chair person here dr k s gupta dr atul mishra dr pradeep karak and uh, dr ajay and uh, we have a panelist list of panelists dr k l agarwal dr ajit duvedi dr abhishek ranjan and uh, there is slight change that he is not able to join right now and i would like to welcome dr salil kumar mandal who is a professor of phrenology i would i would come while while delivering his uh, keynote address we have a galaxy of speaker young speakers dr nandan from bhagalpur dr pragati from uh, rio ijms dr farhat from uh, nmcs dr ashif and alika sir from dmcs and shreya from pmcs dr ashif uh, topic will be delivered by dr ali kaisha there is slight change on this here now uh, so now i request uh, dr sunil singh to uh, uh, welcome uh, uh, to deliver a welcome talk for the encouragement of the younger generation uh, thank you dr nagender who is chairman of uh, academic and research committee of bihar ophthalmological society and uh, i really i at the outset i would like to thank bihar ophthalmological society arc committee to give me an opportunity to welcome you all so on behalf of boss arc committee i welcome you all so especially the my president sir is there the secretary dr vibhuti who is also director of igms uh, is there and uh, immediate past president uh, milin sir is there dr kl gupta is there dr kl dr kl agarwal dr kl agarwal is there dr nandan kumar dr salil kumar mandal who will be giving a keynote address dr pubhishek dr ajay sinha dr farhat parveen dr shreya dr ali kaisar and uh, i i on the, on on again on the behalf i would like to and, and, and the moderator is dr nagendar i like i said like i said the chair person we have galaxy of very good chair persons like dr kl gupta dr atik mishra dr pradeep karak and dr ajay and the panelists are i again welcome the panelists also the dr kl agarwal dr ajit duvedi dr abhishek ranjan dr rakhi kushume <laughs> and again welcome uh, dr sarin kumar mandal who will be giving a keynote address with the professor of ophthalmology and on the topic will be blunt ocular trauma the gallery of speakers i welcome the gallery of speakers also on behalf of boss ars committee dr nandan thank you dr pragati dr farhat dr asif sanawaz dr ali kaisar dr shreya i welcome you all and all the audiences and the esteemed members of the bihar ophthalmology society We are we are welcome you all, and this is our ARC committee, like Dr. Nagender Sagarcha, who is our chairman of ARC. That this is for the PG, by the PG, of the PG. So all the PG will be giving a talk, and I really say the topic is very uh, topic is very relevant of the blunt trauma. And again, again on the behalf of all ARC, I welcome you all. Let's start. We're not giving taking much of a time, and over to moderator of Nagender. Thanks, Dr. Sunil, for your uh, welcome message. Uh, now i request dr panav ranjan sir because uh, this, today we have lost one of the, our senior member dr ahmed so in his memory uh, i request oh, dr yeah doctor, yeah, to... yeah yeah doctor we we lost we got an information about uh, demise of dr uh, laika uh, ahmed he was a very senior bos member and uh, he used to uh, do his practice in uh, patna city area as well as he was associated with a charitable hospital in tanapur Uh, he worked along with 
Dr. Parasnath Sinha, he was the batchmate of Dr. ASB Sahai and Dr. Riyaj Hassan, late Dr. Riyaj Hassan. So today we got the information about his demise and in respect of the departed soul, I request everybody to stand up wherever they are for one minute and stand in silence and pray for the departed soul. So please. Uh, so with this, we uh, break our morning and prayers and uh, get back to the proceedings of the webinar. Okay, so, Dr. Thank, Nagar, you, thank you, sir. Now I request you to say a few words of encouragement to the youngster, sir. Uh, any Anybody would like to speak about uh, Dr. Laik Ahmed uh, before I say two words? Uh, okay. Not okay, 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 right. So, we most of the people because he was so senior that uh, most of us only have we have only heard about him, even I have not personally met him. But uh, when I was working in Danapur Charitable Hospital, uh, I used to hear about him, about his philanthropy, about his uh, clean heart, about his upright approach, and about his surgical skill. Everybody used to praise him like anything. So, a great soul a great BOS member and a great person we have lost today. With these few words, uh, I would once again welcome our um, uh, invited speaker who is going to give the keynote address, Professor Salil Kumar Mandal from Calcutta. A warm welcome to you uh, from our BOS family. Uh, welcome to our chairpersons, the panelists, the speakers. Dr. Sunil Singh and Dr. Nagender, both of them have uh, already mentioned their names. I'll not mention them again. And we are looking forward to a very, very bright and interesting interaction. I must also applaud and appreciate Dr. Nagender Prasad, the chairman of ARC, along with uh, the members of ARC, especially Dr. Sunil Singh, Dr. Milin, immediate past president, Dr. K.S. Gupta, Dr. Pradeep Karak, Dr. Jay Gopal Agarwal, Dr. Vibhuti Prasanna Sinha, the secretary and now the director of IJMS, Dr. Satyajit Sinha, chairman scientific committee, Dr. Nilesh Treasurer, Dr. Ranjana, a special mention about her effort in bringing the, the journal to a higher level and getting it affiliated uh, to a publisher, Walter Kluver. So congratulations to her and all the executive members who have extended their wholehearted support in making BOS and the academic uh, front of BOS uh, shine like uh, chips of frozen fire. In a, uh, we are today uh, meeting to deliberate on a topic, ocular trauma. Ocular trauma perhaps is one of the most common uh, subject which is encountered by almost every ophthalmologist. So it is going to be a very, very interesting deliberation and best of luck to all the, the, the persons involved in, in today's deliberation. So let us enjoy that deliberation. Thank you so much. Uh, with these few words, over to you, Dr. Nagender. Thank you, Pranav, sir, for your word of encouragement. And it is a great day for of the history of BOS. <laughs> As editor, Dr. Ranjana uh, has signed uh, the, uh, with Walter Kruber to the, for the proceeding, uh, for the journal, to the, to the bigger, bigger platform. Uh, I welcome Dr. Ashif Sahnawaz, who is going to the panelist of this session, Dr. Ashif. And uh, I now I request our secretary, Dr. Bhuti Prasanna Sinha, who is the director of IGMS also. It is honorable for us and to speak a few words. Dr. Bhuti, over to you.
Thank you very much, Nagendra sir. Uh, uh, first of all, let me pay my homage and uh, uh, condolence to the bereaved family. And uh, we all are uh, saddened by the untimely demise of so. Uh, today's topic is one of the topic which uh, hits everyone in our day-to-day -day practice. And more so, uh, it is important for the uh, postgraduates to understand uh, the presentations of these cases. Uh, I know Sudhir sir is involved with uh, in selection of uh, these cases and uh, uh, formulation of uh, uh, this webinar. So uh, like him, this is going to be an interactive session. And even I'm going to learn a few things, a uh, few new things about trauma tonight. So I just welcome you, everyone. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the guest speaker, Dr. Professor Salil Mandal. And uh, over to you, Sir Nagita, sir, for tonight's uh, deliberation. We are going to learn a lot from tonight's deliberation. Thank Thanks, you. Dr. Bibhuti. Uh, it is the whole whole subject is conceptualized by Dr. Sudhir, and he only coordinated the rest of the speakers from. So I big thank you, Dr. Sudhir, for helping us. And it is a basic because you are the member of the ARC, so it is uh, your job also <laughs> to help us. So now uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Salil Kumar Mandal, if he is going to uh, deliver keynote uh, address on uh, blunt trauma, ocular trauma. Dr. Salil Kumar Mandal, past MBB from Kolkata, RG Kar Medical College, MD Ophthalmology from the Ames, Delhi, and uh, DNB Ophthalmology, New Delhi. And he has received Best Video Award from AIC in 2020 and Best Physical Poster Award ARC, AI, AIOC 2021. Uh, in oculoplasty. He also received best fee paper oculoplasty 2019 in Delhi Optimal Society and waste video award category, uh, waste video award surgery, uh, waste video award for the cataract surgery in uh, DOS 2020. And it, it, his paper has been selected as the second best fee paper in oculoplasty in 2020. He is a professor of, and the, uh, of the Department of uh, Orbit and Oculoplasty in RIU Medical College, Calcutta. He has a 30 publication under his name, and he is a reviewer of the, of the International Journal too. And he represented uh, four times in ARV USA. So with this uh, word, I welcome Dr. Salil Kumar Mandal, sir, to deliver his talk on uh, uh, blunt ocular trauma. It is honorable to have you here in this platform, sir, for the encouragement and for the enlightening the uh, topic to the general ophthalmologist and particularly jo, those who are going uh, uh, specialist practice. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to me for inviting me uh, for Bihar Ophthalmology Society to speak on a blunt ocular trauma. My slide is visible. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, yes, yes. yes. Can you go to slides? So. It's a pleasure to see that the Bihar Ophthalmology Society invite me to speak on a blunt ocular trauma. Firstly, uh, my respected senior, my junior, my colleagues uh, to invite me to the Bihar for deliberating the blunt ocular trauma. The blunt ocular trauma is the most important subject in emergency as well as in uh, routine management. No pertinent conflicts of interest to disclose. Slide so please sir go on slide so mode sir. It's not moving. Blunt trauma so, is a specific so, injury. So just click on the screen, the slideshow screen. You put it in slideshow mode, sir. It is in slideshow and changing the a slide on a card, sir. Specific injury, the blunt ocular trauma first comes with the examination part, approach to the patient, examination technique, external examination examination of face and leads, and examination of the visual acuity, people's status, extraocular motility, visual fields, and ocular motility, and extraocular and anterior segment examination, like a conjunctiva cornea anterior chamber, iris and lens, and which is body is and retina. Right not moving, uh, may I interrupt you? Uh, person from uh, determination, from can you help him? Determination. Determination of blunt trauma, am amount of energy transfer to the globe and orbit 
It depends on the physical character of the object. Uh, that is uh, density, size, sharp, and cutting edge. The vector force. Sorry to uh, interrupt you, Dr. Sunil. It is slide is not moving. So please, uh, I request audio visual Zoom people to uh, help him. Yes, the slide is moving in, in my sir, computer. Stop, sir, can you stop the share for a minute, sir? Can you share it again? I suppose if we, if we can share it again. Yes, from, just, uh, just, uh, just stop the share, sir. Now it's visible? No, sir. Sir, uh, you will have to click on the resume slideshow if you can. Hello? Hello? Uh, just click on the resume slideshow, sir. Uh, that is also resume share. Resume share now? Res uh, resume share. Uh, it's visible? So you will have to first stop and then reshare. It is not, it is not coming. Only one slide is coming. We can see see, see your arrow uh, moving. There is there is a small icon which says resume slideshow. Sorry, open yeah, the blunt yeah, trauma yeah. open blunt trauma left and left, side, left. Just on the left of the slide, sir. Yeah. Yes. Left again. Go left. More left. More left. Yeah. Yes. The, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Click it now. Now it's visible. Visible, it is visible, sir. But slide is not in the slide show mode. Better you off than again start. Now it is change. No, sir. I, no. It's not changing. I think you can stop the share and then. Stop sharing. sharing huh? well, stop I've sharing stopped. and share again. Share again. Sir, I've stopped. Can you just stop, re reshare it now, please? Welcome, Satyajit. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ah, Satyajit, hai kaha? I don't know. काफी है उसका वेलकम सत्यजीत कहाँ है आउट ऑफ स्टेशन की कहाँ बैरिस्टर में बैठा हुआ है डॉक्टर सर के बाद सत्यजीत का ही हंसी फेमस होता जा रहा है नाउ स्लाइड शेयर अगेन सर डॉक्टर डॉक्टर सलील जस्ट स्लाइड जस्ट डू द शेयर अगेन प्लीज just click on the share screen button and on the pop up just do Alt the share again. Alt cap. No, just on the zoom window there is a Alt share cap. screen button fixed o'clock. Gotcha. Us pe click kariyega, a pop up aayega, right hand side pe blue button hoga, share us pe click kar dijiyega. Dr. Sally, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, it's a problem for participants. Can Okay, just just do just go to the uh, slide share. Yeah, slide share. The one. Resume slide show again. Sir, again, upper tab. The resume slide show. Hai, us pe click kar dijiye. Now it is visible. No, sir. You will have to click on the resume slide show. The upper pop up. Yes, right. Is there? Now it is visible. No, sir. Click it. Click it, sir. Click. सर उस पर क्लिक करने का है रिज्यूम स्लाइड शो पे या ऑल्ट आर दबा दीजिए अपने कीबोर्ड पे ऑल्ट आर इज विजिबल नो सर सो आई थिंक देयर इज सम सम प्रॉब्लम विद योर पावर पॉइंट आई हैव बीन सीन सर सर यू कैन डू वन थिंग यू कैन क्लिक ऑन विजुअल स्लाइड्स एंड देन यू कैन प्रेजेंट सर लाइक 1 2 3 आई मीन click on the individual slide yes. that that's rather good yeah click it now yeah yeah you keep clicking and then yeah yeah, yeah. that yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, it will go yeah this is working it will go yeah yeah so now we can continue with this yeah, yeah. yeah. history yeah. of events from there. history of events the if the site is visible just tell me otherwise it's no, no, it, now, now it is it is on clicking sir okay 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 it is visible Okay, right, Miss. Now, now here is the determination of plant trauma, amount of energy transferred to the globe, and orbit that depends on the physical character of the orbit, the physical character of the object. The physical character object depends depends on the density, size, sharp, 
age and cutting edge and also the factor and factor force or quantity of the force generated by the impact location of the impact is very important whether it is in the lateral area or the floor of the orbit examination of face and lids active bleeding should be controlled with tamponade and own clean the normal size if possible lid should be avoided examine the lid full thickness and lid wingy depth extent of skin should be clearly noted Subcutaneous emphysema in the conjunctiva indicated fracture, orbital bone and sinuses, and face, head, neck injury should be noted. Abnormal positional lead noted. Examination the ptosis, LPS action, palpable fissure height, and auscultation of the closed lid. Sometimes the blunt trauma may cause is a carotid cavernous fistula. This is a photograph. This is a marginal laceration involving the upper and lower lid, and the medial canthal injury. It is just. Restoration of the normal anatomy and 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 repair it. Assessment of the visual acuity, the baseline visual acuity is essential. Uh, it may deteriorate in progressive intraocular hemorrhage. Near vision card is sufficient for checking the visual acuity at pinhole for distant vision. Optic nerve confusion and traumatic retinal angiopathy may cause a fluctuation of the visual acuity. No perception of light documented carefully. Imaging, diagnostic imaging of the ocular trauma is very important. The model it is a plain film, computer tomography, ultrasound, magnetic imaging. Plain film is still as an important. Caldwell will watch its view a lateral position. These are helped to detect the trauma, a, a fracture, or the foreign body inside it. CT scan is standard diagnostic imaging in a traumatized patient. All the view, axial, coronal, the sagittal view is important to accurate anatomic view of the soft tissue and bony changes resulting from trauma. Exact extent of the orbital wall and soft tissue in is better seen in city. Current international machines say uh, also uh, detect a one millimeter size, say a, a, a foreign body, except the aluminum. And also thinnest possible slide, uh, slice may be application for 1.5 millimeter size for better detection of the foreign body as well as the fracture site. Ocular advocacy performed with the 8 to 10 m hodge, which is uh, for anterior chamber pathology and the posterior segment pathology to rule out the lens dislocation, which is damage PVD and RD. MRI is a limited use. MRI for non-metallic vegetative glass, a plastic foreign body and localization of orbit. It is useful in post-operative evaluation of the globe. This is a CT scan, which uh, shown the infraorbital feature of the uh, metallic foreign body. And this uh, slide shows the fracture of the, uh, means the uh, inferior wall of the orbit with uh, fracture of the middle wall of the orbit with the ear inside the globe. This is a USG, which shows the anterior chamber hemorrhage or uh, uh, called the anterior traumatic hyphema. Orbital and additional trauma, edema, emphysema, hemorrhage, ophthalmologies, all due to a trauma. It may cause a stosis, optic nerve blindness, and persisting conjunctival prolapse. This all patient, when develops the edema, emphysema, hemorrhage, we, we have to retract the eyelid and examine some of the eyeball and cornea, cornea to see the, the corneal perforation or a globe rupture is there. The treatment is corticosteroid, orbital cellulitis, if it's expected, then you can do an antibiotic. Intercular pressure better monitor. Surgical procedure, lateral uh, canthotomy when you suspect the intraorbital pressure is increased. Sometimes we do that decompression after lateral canthotomy for the excision of the orbital septum to drain drainage of the blood and negative suction used for surgical decompression of the hemorrhage in the orbit. Sometimes peritomy may be done due to persistent conjunctival prolapse. Anti-segment trauma conjunct with the first line of defense for blunt ocular trauma, subconjunctal hemorrhage is observed, better absorbed. Subconjunctal emphysema, cystic appearance of the conjunctoma, stroma, crepitus in the palpation, commonly associated with the sinus fracture or fracture in the lamina pipus or ethmoid. Simple multiple point when the conjunctiva can be seen sometimes, conjunctiva laceration with a broken glass sometimes we seen. In the absence of globe rupture, small conjunctival perforating injury better not to repair, defect larger than one centimeter sutured with absorbable material. Congenital laceration with, this is a photograph, this is congenital laceration, so subconjunctal hemorrhage. This is a foreign body, the conjunctiva. 
which is seen in the bulbar conjunctiva. Corneal penetration is suspected, then you do a serial test for aqueous leakage. So I, corneal abrasion caused by direct tangential impact of foreign body by fingernail, plant, mascara, brass, and contact lens. Careful examine the bulb and tarsan conjunctiva for foreign body. Significant risk of microbial infection when there is a vegetative trauma. Topical anesthetic better avoid it. It may cause a delayed bone healing. A regarding irrational persistent epithel can be managed efficiently. This is a corneal perforation injury, which is repaired efficiently with AC formation. People and iris unconscious patient, people reflex is the only indicator of the visual system function. The people should be inspected, shape, location, light reaction, and eccentricity. Dilated to in the presence of head injuries, a sign of increased intercranial pressure. Significant blunt trauma initially, people has a spasmodic myosis, which is transient, accompanied by spasmo accommodation, followed by traumatic mediated, which is loss of accommodation. Picked people is worrisome. It may be indicated intraocular hemorrhage and scleral corneal perforation. RAPD always evaluated in all trauma patients. In iris injury, mostly penetrating injury and non-penetrating also. The most common pattern of iris injury is the sphincter tear, dialysis of most of the iris root, iridiasis, iridocytis, iridocytis, and iris atrophy because of vascularity problem. In the plant trauma, the pigment that liberated, the pigment liberated for the iris is deposed in the cornea, endothelium and trabecular measures more causes transient glaucoma. Initially, sphincter muscle injury is minimally resulting in anisocoria. And also in severe cases, profound mediasis followed by unresponsiveness to light. Stretching of the iris root, frequently in the high femur, a hyperpigmentation at angle or cyanic formation. There may be angle recession, dialysis of the iris root, and creation of the cyclodialysis clip. This is a blunt trauma resulting in iridialysis. This is a iridialysis. It requires sutures. We put a mechanical suture and repair it. And there is a uh, iris prolapse, uh, which is repaired urgently if it is a long standing abscission of the iris done or excision followed by reposition. Anterior chamber traumatic hypha is a common manifestation of plant trauma, stretching of the limbal tissue, equatorial ex expansion, posterior displacement of lens iris trauma, acute elevation of IOP. Most of the hyphema due to the injury of the major arterial cycle and the choroidal arteries and ciliary body vein. 15% for the rupture in the iris vessel and cyclodialysis or iridiasis. Microscopic hyphema is better prognosis. Angle recession is the separation between the longitudinal and circular muscle fiber of the ciliary body seen in traumatic hyphema. Amount of angle recession does not correlate to the size of the hyphema or I IOP. Indication of surgical intervention of traumatic hyphema, traditional IOP more than 50 millimeter market for five days, 30 millimeter, 35 millimeter market for seven days, corneal blood staining, a prolonged clot duration, larger clot persistent for more than 10 years, may require arch and drainage, complication of, of the long standing hyper causes de-bleeding when it is evacuated, glaucoma and corneal blood staining. This is a hyphema. This type of hyphema is easily resolved, but this is an eight ball hyphema. It needs a drainage procedure. Traumatic glaucoma, seven ring of circle of tissue anterior to the equator suddenly expand. This forceful expansion may cause a tissue separation, resulting in splitting and tearing of the tissue. Such injury in the long term leads to glaucoma. The seven anterior ring, the ring number one, sphincter people, rupture and radial tear. Ring number two, peripheral edges of the iris, the iris based iridiasis. Ring number three, anterior ciliary body angle recession may produce. Attachment of the ciliary body to the scleral spawn, ring number four, a cyclodiasis produce a cyclodialysis clip. Number five, trabecular meshwork, splits and separation of the tissue. Number six, janular dialysis causes subluxation, dislocation of the lens. A seven attachment of the retina to ora serrata. These are the seven ring, just schematic. This is a ring number one in the people margin. This is ring number two, iridialysis. This is a ring number three, angle recession. Ring number four is a cyclodialysis kept here. A ring number five, a trabecular meshwork. Ring number six, a general dialysis. Ring number seven, the ora serrata. You should remember the picture, then you can assess uh, how the traumatic glaucoma is seen, is uh, produced. Acute glaucoma without hemorrhage. Chronic glaucoma with angle recession. If more than one entity to the angle is recessed, uh, there is 10% of chance of development of chronic glaucoma. Immediate gonioscopy not required, only for the research purpose. 
Discronioscopy only for research purpose, immediate chronoscopy not required. This picture shows a wider celebrity band, trabecular mixture, pigmentation, scleral span, and solvage line. This unexpected wider band may cause this angle recession glaucoma. This is a cyclodiasis cleft, an unequal depth of the anterior chamber, which is shown in the picture. Lens injury, vocal thing due to blunt trauma and to eye and circular ring, which is brown and first granules of pigments. A deposit over the eye anterior deck and lens capsule, same diameter as the contracted people in iris imprint due to forced concussion injury. Condition cataract may be focal, sectoral, and total. Dislocation of the subluxation lanes, rapid exo -ec equatorial expansion of the globe, second to the sudden anterior posterior compression during blunt trauma can be jumla causes jumla disruption. This is a a lens dislocation or sublux, uh, subluxation, age is seen, and this is a bosier thing, iris in front of the anterior capsule. Now comes to posture segment, but it's very important. In coop injury, the local trauma is directly at the site of blunt impact. A contra coop conducive damage occurs at the site of the impact. Retina is a vulnerable for contra coop injury. Blunt ocular trauma, anterior posture compression, horizontal displacement from the eye fluid. I expand the horizontal plane, several posture segment structure, severely stretch. Common retin, commercial retina, first described by Berlins in 1873. Immediate diminution of central vision, retinal clouding, and return of the visual easily. This is a Berlin edema, whitening of the retina, well demarcated vessel scene, and ill defined margin. And this is a scleral rupture, a choroidal rupture associated with the commercial retina. Prognosis is fairly good in chromosome retina. What is that? A geographic pattern of gray white clouding or precipitation of the outer retina. Margins are ill defined on contact lens by microscopy. Inner retina, blood vessel clearly visible. Hedge, hedge of edematous swelling in the outer retina. Edema may be in the macula, in the posterior hole, and the retinal retina and the peripheral retina. There may be subretinal, interretinal, periretinal hemorrhage, choroidal rapture, and sidus serous macular detachment. Retinal whitening subside within a week. Partial and full thickness macular hole can be seen. Partial retinopathy is 1912. Partial retinopathy is described in a traumatic patient. And under changes dissolved in the four month, possible mechanism of anti arterial occlusion by ear and fat embolism. Retinal vessels will avoid trauma by increased hydrostatic pressure. Arterial endothelial damage with increased arterial pressure. Local retinal vascular coagulopathy and retinal angiospatic edition following the increased venous pressure. So this is a, post, this is a picture of posture retinopathy. This is the patchy white and clear vessels are seen and the retina is mostly developed after a plant trauma. Now comes to traumatic macular hole. 19, 1869, NAP described the macular hole by conditions of ocular injury. Possible mechanism of post condition necrosis of the tissue, subphobial hemorrhage and vitreous traction. Vitreous base avulsion of pathognomonic in the trauma. Retinal dialysis without retinal detachment, 66% in the inferior temporal quadrant, 14% in the supranasal, 10% of the superior temporal quadrant. This is a picture of the macular hole which is seen. Now, retinal dialysis with regmentation of retinal detachment, trauma retinal tear without retinal detachment, trauma retinal tears with retinal detachment, giant retinal tear without retinal detachment. Retinal tears extending more than 90 degrees, all three glaucars are commonly known as the giant retinal tear and so with a circumvention globe and giant retinal tear with retinal detachment. Now, this is a picture of a traumatic retinal tears, and this is a giant retinal tear, which is uh, crossed over three clock words, and this is a retinal retinal dialysis at the retina, at the oroserata. Now comes to an optic nerve injury. This is a very common direct trauma to the penetrating into the orbit, an avulsion of the optic nerve completely or partially in severe trauma. In severe cases, hold in the posterior sclera often seen where the optic nerve is attached, whether it is attached and supposed to be seen. Blunt trauma, forehead, bow, may cause it direct into the intracanalicular part of the optic nerve. This is a picture of the optic nerve avulsion at the posterior pole and optic nerve is out of the sclera and it's a whole is visible scene. So my recommendation is that when the traumatic patient comes to you, you may not be a specialist. As a general ophthalmologist, you can do as much as possible. 
After that, when you see it requires a retina specialist opinion or a glaucoma specialist opinion, you clearly send the patient to a specific specialist like retina and a glaucoma. I am basically an optastic surgeon and oculoplastic surgeon. I can manage the treatment of adenaxial trauma and lead trauma and lead management. Thank you for attending this session. And thanks mm. to Bihar Ophthalmology Society to invite me to speak over the plant ocular trauma. Thank you, Dr. Salil, for your excellent presentation on the ocular trauma and overview of the ocular trauma. And, uh, and we can get all sorts of uh, clinical <coughs> signs uh, in, the, in trauma. And it is very difficult to manage. One thing I would like to uh, uh, stress upon that once you examine the patient, as Dr. Mandal has told, uh, that you always keep in your mind the seven rings of uh, uh, ocular trauma, so you, you can't miss uh, the major uh, major blunder part of the trauma. And uh, I, I also, is there any role of a special taking consent before going for the special consent for in those cases? Uh, informed consent should be taken. Those uh, actually, in the emergency situation, uh, I, I think the special consent is not needed. So first, you save the life patient and your management to the visual uh, improvement. And uh, if you do a oculoplasty, uh, then if you do an oculoplasty, you should explain the prognosis of the patient to the party and visual out I mean, uh, aesthetic outcome. Especially mm -hmm. fully explain to the patient party that uh, and I have do what is my best and uh, possible outcome uh, like this. Uh, you should be clearly uh, mentioned the visual acuity. Patient may be blind, but don't say unnecessary. The patient can be see everything. So blind ocular trauma is a very important. Prognosis should be clearly explained to the patient party and the, uh, 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 otherwise they have a misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, if you repair a corneal injury, you you should say six six vision. It is not possible. So clearly mention clearly before on the next day after operation that this is your visual outcome. A very pertinent point, Doctor Sarin. Uh, any panelist uh, wants to add something? Something. Uh, uh, just just yes. one thing, uh, Doctor Sudhir. Uh, you, you continue, Doctor Sudhir. Then I ask. Uh, actually, I want to highlight one or two things regarding a, a blunt injury. Patient may look normal in the first view. And you may say that you don't need any uh, consultation or any uh, ophthalmic intervention. But uh, one should be calm, especially in the emergency. The PGs are there and they should see uh, the visual equity. The visual equity may be good at the time of presentation. But later on, when the cataract, if it is, if it is having, this will increase with time in a day or two. And the patient may see poor vision or decreased vision, then they may blame you for your treatment. So one should always say that at this moment, you, this is your, at this moment, this is your uh, condition, but let it, let it, uh, let the time pass and hope that you will be good with future, in future, but the things may appear, uh, worse things may appear in coming day days. So don't explain the visual uh, prognosis uh, in a very good term, but rather say, the, let us see what happens to you. And uh, obviously, Dr. Salil has pointed out that the patient may be having <clears throat> glaucoma or he may develop glaucoma apart from other trauma or retinal detachment or vitreous hemorrhage, because these may be, uh, basically these may get uh, uh, obs uh, obscured behind the hyphema in the anterior chamber. And uh, so all this should be explained and rather before explaining the postgraduates and the residents there must uh, look for any injury which can cause further uh, damage to the eye and prevent those injuries. Thank you. Uh, another Very much agree, yeah, one, one uh, thing, Dr. Salil, uh, can I ask uh, one question? Uh, Dr. Salil, uh, yes. Uh, like uh, you were saying, the protocol about the hyphema, when to give medical management, when to drain, and if after drain it again reappears, pressure is rising, when to do what? Can you uh, uh, can you uh, elaborate on that? Actually, the hyphema uh, 
if it's a micro micro circulation high fever, it's just spontaneously drain. Some of the patient I have seen that uh, there is a re bleeding. Uh, there might be a chance of blood coagulopathy. You should check for uh, blood, BTCT platelet count. Uh, you can uh, try it. Uh, uh, re bleeding uh, maybe happen. The most of the injury from the major arterial circle. And if it is uh, not tamponed uh, uh, properly, uh, it will again re-bleed. A sudden, uh, decree, uh, su sudden uh, pressure uh, fall down in the anterior chamber, again, it may cause uh, re-bleeding. So uh, before uh, um, uh, evacuation of the high femur, you should tamponate with the uh, ER. If you take the full ER chamber, chances of uh, uh, re-bleeding is less. This is my experience about that. So he went to when to uh, drain and when to wait for the drain to give medical management. When that to drain and when not when, when to drain. That uh, I have seen that when the pressure is more than fifty millimeter mercury for five days and thirty five mercury for seven that's days, that's days that's this is the indication. And if, if the patient have a corneal blood staining, uh, you should urgently drain it. No. And again, again, uh, there is uh, if there is a persistent clot retraction is there, this clot is never absorbed. So um, if the clot is there more than 10 days, you should remove that clot. Otherwise, uh, uh, patient uh, is difficult to see it and um, lots of complications lateral may cause posterior sinicia, glaucoma formation. Well. The high femurs, when you see more than five dents and the criteria I have seen, I, I have tell before that, if you not maintain, then you will be in problem. So protocol should be maintained to prevent your medical local, medical local importance. So nobody uh, have a question that why you are not doing a high femur drainage. So according to Brooke, we are doing uh, the high femur drainage. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Salil. Dr. Uh, Ajit uh, would like to add something. Uh, Dr. Abhishek, please. Uh, one you thing say? I want to add that sometimes ocular trauma, in case of ocular trauma, some uh, conjunct travel handbags should be looked for very cautiously because sometimes a spinal rupture is there behind the subconjunct travel handbags that is concealed. And uh, if we suspect like uh, uh, intraocular pressure is uh, slightly lower side or Whatever, then we have to explore the explore the wound, and we should rule out any uh, concealed uh, scleral tear. And uh, one question I I want to ask one question from Dr. Salim that in CT scan all the metallic foreign bodies are uh, detected, but why alcunium is not detected? <laughs> Actually, it is written in a book. So when aluminium is not detected in CT scan. Uh, I have written in a book, but uh, rest of all the metallic foreign body is uh, seen in CT scan also. So uh, what about the aluminium foreign body is a real foreign body in the orbit. Uh, I think uh, let's go for magnetic resonance imaging when the CT scan is not uh, performing the detection of uh, this non-metallic, uh, this metal, a low dense eco city. So um, uh, advice for MRI, because I am also not clear whether it's in aluminum formidity impacted in the uh, orbit, uh, how you detect. It may be a, a MRI or a city, but city is not detected that I know, but I have read from the book. So actually <laughs> in any type of foreign body, ultrasound is one of the good uh, indicator because city scan has very limit a limitation of its thickness but while ultrasound can pick a smaller metallic or non metallic uh, foreign body and uh, regarding aluminium if it is pure uh, really i don't I, I i heard it for the first time that it is not detectable on ct scan uh, and uh, probably nowadays aluminium in pure form is not used uh, in industrial or home appliances they are usually mixed with some other alloy uh, yeah, they are formed in. Anyway, I was, uh, it is information for me. But ultrasound is a good uh, alternative before you go for MRI. Because uh, this, will, this will give better resolution of the foreign body, even if it is uh, non-metallic. Sir, it was a, such a very nice overview of the blunt of trauma by Sir. And uh, it was... Uh, uh, it was all the things we should keep in mind. I just want to highlight two things. Whenever an ocular trauma patient presents to us, they present in two scenarios. Either the patient come to us or we go to the ICU to detect there. So in, even in ICU, 
even in ICU, we should be very much careful about the pulmonary reactions and the prognosis. And if you will be able to diagnose those optic nerve avulsions or suspect even uh, those optic nerve avulsion, many a time the anterior segment is okay and the posterior segment you may find with them. And the mere addition of steroids along with consultation of with the neurosurgeon, we can do wonders. And uh, definitely Dr. Abhishek has highlighted that any trivial trauma to the globe should be suspected uh, for, and must be examined in detail, uh, definitely on another way. Very nice input, Dr. Ajit Dwedi. And if just anyone to add on one just, word, sir. Yeah, Apart Dr. from all these, things, I would just yeah, I would just emphasize that uh, having said everything, the documentation must be very meticulous in these trauma cases because these cases usually later on turn turn out to be medical legal, and that point of time, if things are not very well documented, but I want to emphasize the importance of documentation in not popular trauma cases. That should be. Go in history. History is very important in popular trauma. If you always listen about the mode of injury, it will tell you about the lot uh, regarding the trauma, the metallic body, and uh, uh, the things you can suspect inside the eye. And accordingly, you can request the investigation. So, shall we move on to another presentation? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, Just yeah, one I, point, I, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sure, sure, Dr. Vivek. Just one point, since this is a PG forum, you must understand that what are the common mistakes which are happening around when PGs are evaluating. Uh, one of the common mistakes which I have seen that uh, once they detect few uh, signs or signs are there, they leave behind most of the signs. So, like, uh, if there is a small hyphema, they are happy with finding out uh, the small hyphema. Now, once the small hyphema is there, one should look for the plethora of signs which can uh, behind those hyphema. So, uh, in that ma in that scenario, Dr. Salil's presentation was apt. He knew, enumerated most of the findings, and one should remember that all these things can happen even with a subtle of trauma. So, as a postgraduate, one has to find out most of the signs rather than be happy with finding one or two signs uh, with a blunt trauma. That's my take. Okay, nice. Thanks, Dr. Bhivati. Uh, I should move on to another presentation by Dr. Nandan Kumar, who is a bright student <coughs> from uh, JNL Jawaharlal Nehru. Thank you, sir. Hagalpur and uh, second year PG, you are? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks. He is going to present on penetrating ocular trauma and its management part. So, uh, we, so Dr. Nandan, please go. Yes, thank you, sir. Go with your presentation. Slides so please. Yes. yes. Am I audible to everyone? Yeah, well yes. audible. Yes. Good evening, respected sir, respected ma'am, my seniors and my dear colleagues. Thanks for giving me opportunity to present a webinar on the perforating ocular injury. I am Dr. Nandan Kumar, second year PG from the I department, Johalla Nehru Medical College, Bhagalpur. As we, as we see the injury, there are two types of uh, injury, whether it is a closed globe injury or open globe injury. Closed globe injury can be due to, con uh, can lead to contusion, lamellar laceration, superficial foreign body. Open globe uh, injury may be further divided into laceration and rupture laceration, maybe due to penetrating injury, perforating injury, or maybe due to the intraocular foreign body. Penetrating ocular injury, it is a single full thickness wound of eyeball caused by a sharp object like needles, knives, pens and pencil. It may be also due to trauma by foreign bodies at high speed bullet injuries or iron foreign bodies. 
epidemiology epidemiology it is a preventable cause of blindness in all age group it is three times more common in men and it is also more common more common in the lower socio economic uh, status population a 50% of the penetrating ocular injury occurs in the 15 to 34 years age group uh, it is most uh, most commonly it is seen in the home uh, which is 65 65.4% then it is roadside 13.1% in and in the farm and on the farm farm side 11.8% and 4% in the school and 5.9 in the working person working place effects of the penetrating in, in injury effects are the mechanical effects trauma may cause the mechanical effects it may cause the introduction of the infection it may cause post traumatic hydrocephalus connect post traumatic off kar do bluetooth please please <coughs> post traumatic hydrocyclitis and sympathetic ophthalmitis these are all potentially serious complication and should be treated as emergencies risk factors uh, are the delay in the primary repair ruptured lens and the dirty wound so evaluation at early stage is must evaluation first as the patient comes to the emergency room uh, emergency rooms vitals should be assessed at first in all the cases due to the chance of non ocular injury face a scalp and neck should be evaluated at, at in the early uh, stages vitals uh, should be vitals should be measured in all the cases like pulse bp respiratory rate rate orientation to time place and person after that with the history like age of the patient time and date of the injury for the medical legal pur purpose mechanism like whether it is by the sharp or blunt object and place whether it is at ho work home or road traffic accident sign and symptoms uh, uh, like pain redness decreased vision treatment and intervention already given at the primary health uh, primary health care or from the referral center visual status before and after injury is must in all the cases for the medico legal purposes external examination a skull face and orbital areas should be assessed for any injury ocular adnexa lead laceration lead edema or any obvious foreign body protruding should be uh, evaluated Visual, equi visual equity should be evaluated. People should be evaluated whether it is, whether it is round, regular, or uh, re reaction to light is present or not. Extraocular motility is uh, seen in all the direction and gauges subconjunctival hemorrhage is noted. In this diagram, we can see the uh, we, we can see the lower lid laceration. Eyelids and eyelids and lacrimal injuries should be evaluated with major goal of identifying and protecting poss possible deep injury. to the globe lead repair should not proceed until globe rupture is ru ruled out so if there is a globe rupture then we should not go for the lead repair so, uh, after that slit lamp examination is done and the conjunctiva wounds of conjunctiva are common it is by the uh, it may it may have foreign bodies hemorrhagic chemosis conjunctival laceration is also ruled out large if there is a large laceration then it is sutured with the absorbable suture 80 or 60 vicryl in this diagram we can see the conjunctival laceration is there iris and angle is uh, iris and angle iris prolapse uh, iris prolapse a sphincter tear is a sphincter tear is more common in the uh, penetrating ocular injury iridodialysis and iridodonesis is ruled out and in the in, in the lens movement of the lens that is a uh, phacodonesis subluxation or dislocation of the lens and rupture of the anterior or posterior capsule is evaluated corneal uh, corneal injury may be linear or laceration in the corneal injury if it is a, a small then the margin swells up. if if the corneal injury is a, a small then the margin swells up and become cloudy due to a thus restoring anterior chamber by closure of wound if a small and limited to center cornea heals very well unless infected treatment is a small distant injury prolapse iris replaced with intraocular pilocarpin and repaired with Yeah, no, basically, yeah. Prolapse, prolapse iris replaced with intraocular pilocarpin and repaired with 10-0 nylon. If iris is non-viable, then abscess and edges of wound suture. If large lesion of iris or is prolapse, it is almost certain to occur. Scleral wounds more than three to four mm posterior to limbus are sutured completely after thorough exploration. It is also treated with surrounding cryo applications. dirty wound by vegetative vegetative matter then pyogenic organism cause rapid necrosis of the entire cornea so uh, we ask the patient for uh, if there is injury by vegetative matter or not because it leads to the rapid necrosis of the entire cornea by the pyogenic organism in case of rapid necrosis ring of infiltration appears 
टू और थ्री एम एम इंटरनल टू एंड कंसेंट्रिक विद कर्नियोर मार्जिन सो कॉल्ड रिंग अपसेस इफ If organism is pseudomonas uh, or originates a extensive pimosis of conjunctiva with green discharge as seen in the image, liquefaction of cornea is uh, is is seen and pain of thalamitis may set in later on. Corneal tear. Corneal tear is a partial or full thickness injury. Longer such longer sutures near to visual axis, greater tissue distress, distortion, and more astigmatism. So we should try to give the sutures in the periphery um, as far as possible. Longer sutures put uh, away from the visual axis. Cornea, uh, corner periphery closed with long tight sutures. Cornea center closed with the shorter, more widely spaced, minimally compressive tissue bites. Single and interrupted sutures is given to prevent the astigmatism. Equal depth of uh, suturing on both sides. Anterior chamber should be evaluated, uh, and it is evaluated in all all the cases. If it is shallow anterior chamber, then it is only sign sign of occult globe rupture and associated with worse prognosis. If deeper anterior chamber is there, then it is seen the posterior uh, rupture due to extrusion of vitreous from the posterior segment. Pupils should be uh, examined for shape, size, light reflex. A peaked tear uh, drop shaped or otherwise irregular pupil may indicate globe rupture. Lens wounds cause uh, any injury cause the uh, may cause the traumatic cataract if wound in capsule a small entry of aqueous causes localized cloudiness opacity in form of feathery lines appear in posterior cortex called as roger shaped cataract as seen in this image roger shaped cataract is there which is due to the trauma traumatic hydrocyclitis is invariable and severe lens swelling keeps the iris in contact with cornea and secondary glaucoma may occur. Posterior segment evaluation is done for the vitreous hemorrhage, uh, or there is any uh, retinal detachment, retinal dialysis, and tear. Posterior vitreous detachment, choroidal rupture, optic nerve trauma, or uh, any uh, intraocular foreign body, as seen in the image. Retrobulbar hematoma may be there, uh, may be there, so we must do CT scan, as seen in this image. Uh, it is a CT scan image, and uh, retrobulbar hematoma is there. Investigation: uh, We will do the X-ray to detect the intraocular foreign body. Ultrasound via scan for intraocular injury, CT brain and orbit, and MRI. Treatment: Pre-hospital care. Protect from any pressure or any inadvertent contact with rigid shield during the transport. Impaled foreign bodies should be left undisturbed, and in the emergency uh, and in the emergency room, avoid all pressures to prevent extrusion of intraocular content. Administer administer analgesics and prophylactic antibiotic within six hours to prevent endophthalmitis. Treatment of traumatic cataract. If there is a uh, traumatic cataract and complicated by vitreous loss, then first we will remove the cataract, then perform adequate vitrectomy, suture the globe as primary procedure, and insert the intraocular lens in the suitable cases. There is a complication. It may be due to the infection by gas-forming organisms such as Clostridium vulgari. They excite a prolonged pain of thalamitis with brownish discharge and gas bubbles in the anterior chamber. Uh, as seen in this image, there is a brownish discharge and the uh, gas in the anterior chamber. Tetanus is rare complication leading to localized cephalic type of tetanus. Mechanism effects: Foreign body may pass into or through the lens by either the iris or pupil, iris and zonule, or directly through the sclera. If comes to the vitreous, remains suspended for some time, then sinks sinks to bottom, leading to vitreous degeneration. Occasionally, it passes the cords and comes to rest in the orbital tissue known as Double perforation of eye. Sympathetic ophthalmitis is a, a rare complication nowadays, but it is must known complication. This is a condition in which serious inflammation attacks the sound eye after the injury to the other. These factors are wounds involving the ciliary body, suppression in the exciting eye, following cataract or glaucoma surgery, and the arc cytophotocoagulation, cyclophotocoagulation, beam irradiation. Children are particularly susceptible for sympathetic ophthalmitis. Duration: It begins uh, four to eight weeks after the injury of exciting eye. Onset occur as early as nine days after uh, accident and may be delayed for months or even year. In 80% cases, occur within three months. Etiology is autoimmune, T cell mediated due to evil uh, pigment act as at antigen. Symptoms are decreased near vision. It is the first symptom due to the involvement of the ciliary muscle. Hemorrhages may be there. Congestion, lacrimation, retrolateral flare is the first sign. Seen on the slit lamp, kippies and basakat nodules may be seen uh, in this diagram. Kippies nodules are there. 
it leads to chronic persistent inflammation in injured eye though rare the disease is sight threatening so prompt recognition with early and long term steroid therapy helps to salvage the vision treatment prophylactic systemic antibiotics are indicated in all the cases of blob rupture cefazolin arrests bacterial cell wall synthesis and inhibit bacterial replication ciprofloxacin provides excellent coverage against staphylococcal organism and pseudomonas but not against streptococcus uh, clindamycin cover both streptococcus and anaerobic organism so multi drug therapy is uh, given in the case of sympathetic ophthalmitis don't and do do not flush the eye with any liquids other than saline or warm water or even better do not touch the eye do not remove the object out of eye do not put any pressure on eye do not rub your eye and what to do flush the eyes with copious amount of saline or warm water until symptoms resolve unless it is severe penetrating or bleeding injury advise patient against rubbing or moving the eye as this can cause further damage if injury is severe place a moist pad and loosely bandage the eye a small penetrating object use cup to cover the object thank you thank you sir <laughs> Uh, thank Dr. Nandan for your extensive talk and very well presented and you covered most of the things. And uh, one thing uh, I would like to ask that uh, uh, if a patient comes to uh, your uh, to you, you do you yes. advise any investigation like X-ray or uh, something like that? To... Sir, if it is it if it is extra uh, if it is intraocular body it it if Oh, intraocular foreign body is suspected and the ultrasound via scan is not not there then we can go for x ray in the first first attempt sir please so stop this uh, no. uh, can i ask some question dr nandan yes sir yes sir stop uh, screen sharing first dr nandan then yes sir uh, it was your first presentation sir, was yes, it sir, your here, first presentation no sir here uh, i i also presented in my college sir Okay, okay. It is a very nice presentation and uh, elaborate yes, also. Yes, but a yes. uh, few things I would like to just, it is a suggestion. Yes. If yes. a patient comes Man, to you with history of injury yes, and he cannot open his eyes, what yes, are you sir. going to do? Sir, uh, and then if it is the, due to the lead, uh, lead edema, then we will uh, try to open the eye if the globe is intact. If the glow, glow how, how do you know that glow is intact, intact when he is not opening the eyes? See, I know yes, you should never try to forcibly open any eye which uh, is closed after injury because it may be harboring a perforation. And while opening uh, the eyes with force, forcefully, it means you are going to do expulsive type of thing. Yes. So this should be examined under either general anesthesia. Yes, sir. And uh, never try to uh, uh, push uh, forcibly open the eyes or put any drop or yes. ointment in any eye with the, yes. who, who has history of injury. Thank this you. is Sudhir. my suggestion. Sudhir, yes, I have to ask one question to this young boy. Yes. So he is my medical college. Ka hai. Ji, ji, sir. How many jury he has seen it first in his OPD? And what type of OPD injury he has, he has seen? What he said is all theoretical, but has yes, he sir. seen any injury case? Yes, sir. Like injury by the uh, injury by a stick, sir. Injury by the uh, so he line bola tha, beta, ultrasound karayenge. Kya yes, sir. College mein ultrasound ho raha hai, now it is not working, sir, but it's not working okay. two, four months back, sir. Before, one thing I like to... But we refer the nice. patient to the private... Uh, sir, sir, just to... Uh, uh, Dr. Andar, such a uh, nice presentation uh, with comprising all the things at this, at your stage, we were unable to do that. And, and, and but, uh, there are a few things uh, sir has already pointed out. Few practical things. The the things are not being done or experienced by the persons in hand. It will be difficult to do that. Uh, in perforating injuries, you have already highlighted all the things. Yes. You have to mention some classification system. There are multiple classification system to uh, add on, and that gives you the prognosis as well, and yes. as well as the, the intervention to act. And this will give you a, a sort of uh, more scientific way to approach a patient. That's my Thank suggestion, you. number one. And, uh, and uh, definitely it was a very good presentation at your stage.
and try to keep all those things in your mind and always have give some time to have the history of come the patient thanks thank you dr ajit uh, since dr milind has uh, pointed out the role of ultrasonography so before going referring patient for ultrasonography must you must check the integrity of the globe yes. otherwise you will lose the eye some content of the eye so, so it is if it is not perforation then you can always go ahead for and if you, as dr sudhir has already pointed out the in a, uh, if your eye is not in don't tight firstly to open it i take some time take some time two three yes, days sir. before it's open up or you do under ga if if, if condition situation permits yes, any sir. question from any body sir or should you move another perforating injury patients usually room around two to three patients uh, two to three doctors yeah yes sir always. so uh, if you are lucky that if your third doctor of that patient then he can he, he can get, take the treatment from you yes if if he came for the first time uh, to any doctor so if any urgent treatment is required and if you explain the prognosis he will go to the other doctor yes no yeah, exactly this happens very practical tips kale, doctor kale, <laughs> kale has uh, put a very valid point and uh, the, the, this kind of patients they keep on roaming around but the, our duty is to tell them the truth and and at the same time if we are not uh, uh, if we are not ready to take up the case i will say it's better to refer to the center where yes. it can be done so i think what i did right dr duvedi ek second pronounce sir ek second pronounce sir ek second ha bolo bolo sir nandan yes sir when you have to refer a patient because he has yes. used the word refer yes. what precaution and what you will do on yes. paper and with the patient in referring a case to higher center Sir, we will start the anti uh, antibiotics. Sir, systemic antibiotics. We will start the anti uh, systemic antibiotics, and then we will give the topical antibiotics as well, if possible. And uh, then we uh, cover the eye with the bandage, pad and bandage, and then we will refer. Sir, anything more? So, what is the role of systemic antibiotic in this case? Sir, it is perforating uh, ocular injury, so there may be chances of uh, there may be chances of introduction of in infection. no so role of systemic antibiotics once there is a perforation the the uh, the uh, antibiotic which penetrates intraocular like ciprofloxacin should be yes there. sir ciprofloxacin so already like already so mentioned so in the book or if you uh, putting the topical drops it uh, if you have a blood level of uh, uh, higher higher level of uh, antibiotic in your blood so absorption absorption of uh, the topical antibiotic would be the less into the blood so you act locally for the long term this is the explanation given by uh, in some books and all the systemic has to be given added in systemic the has to be given, yeah because yeah, if patient also to see the medical legal for problem also in those okay. patient goes to the uh, court they the judge ko yahi samajh mein aata hai ki antibiotic diya ki nahi aapne khane ke liye has to be covered broad spectrum antibiotic yeah, yes. with, sir with acetazolamide also if there is any brand injury with acetazolamide acetazolamide to do the do the needful for the patient yes. the approach should not be the reference one thing i liked his, in his presentation dr nandan he stressed upon the physical uh, overall examination of the patient yes. actually we focused on the eye part so we miss the most of the things like other head injury type kind of thing any fracture part and something like that so he first uh, emergency treatment should be to, uh, first we have to look for any there is emergency for the patient or not sometimes patient Usually, आँख में चोट लगा, आँख में चला आया, but they might have had some intracranial yes, injury. injury. So I had, I have come across the very few cases of like that. He has a beautiful collection of the pictures as well. काफी वाला. बहुत unique है. और 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 एक चीज मेरा experience इतना है कि penetrating injury should be treated at the first sight. I mean, we should not lose much time. Yes, yes, yeah, that is very good. So both, now we move to the other presentation. Not to refer it. Should we move at least, the, at, at least the at least the primary repair should be done at the first shot. No, okay. It is very difficult to get a consent from the patient. The patient for the primary do agree. Our approach should be to do it. Hum log we have to do our best. Yeah, I agree with Nilesh. Nilesh, one our approach has to be that proactive, and we have to see that they also agree to it. These are clinical 
मतलब दिस आर ओपीडी क्लिनिकल मैनेजमेंट पार्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ एक्जेक्टली एंड द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन एज डॉक्टर नीलेश सेड दैट इज अ मस्ट because we do not know how the 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 eyes are the patient is going to behave better than the better than the treatment part better but than the but in medical part. college eh, the patient once patient goes to the medical college the the stay there only because yeah they, uh, yeah there is a patient who roam around practice uh, private practitioner roam to some few people or if you explain something like uh, you have honestly explained at first go he might come after referring uh, after consulting two three doctors to you yeah. for treatment and all so that is from, that from, is, uh, yeah, from yeah. medical college you cannot refer it pro- yeah. pro- yeah. 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 Sir, you can pehla question agar puchta hai sir ki sir mat sankar netralaya ja sakte hain jaiye kya jawab dena nahi uska yahi jawab hai registration kar ke chale aata hai sir yahi jawab hai ki pehle repair kara lo tab jana mere khayal se nagendra sir ha good good evening sir गुड इवनिंग गुड गुड इवनिंग मैम आप पम्मी है नियाज यस डॉक्टर पम्मी आपका अच्छा आ नहीं रहा है हां 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 सर भाई माय पीसी इज प्रेजेंटेशन रिफ्यूज ओके वेरी नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन डॉक्टर पम्मी बहुत अच्छा प्रेजेंट योर फोटो हियर ओनली एंड यू यू मस्ट हैव गाइड गाइडेड हिम वेरी वेल आई थिंक सो हां यस सर यस सर बट आई जॉइन लेट ड्यू टू द नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम सर नो सॉरी फॉर दैट हिज प्रेजेंटेशन वाज एक्सीलेंट वेरी नाइसली वेल कवर्ड इंजुरी शुड नॉट बी रिपेयर getting injury so yes, i sir. just want to know from you what should be the sequence if there is injury in the sclera cornea and limbus along with eyelid injury what would be your sequence of repair anybody sir, will not leave eyelid injury uh, as such yes sir. what should be the yeah, your sequence first we will first we will repair the cornea then sclera then eyelid okay, first you have to repair the limbus limbus then move yes, forward sir. yeah so yes, cornea sir. sclera then eyelid Yes. Yes. Sir. Ah, limbus yes. Limbus. Limbus. Yes. Sir. So yes. that you can anatomically oppose uh, the condition. Yes. Thank ah. you, sir. Ah, uh, lead can be taken secondary also. Yes. 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 Yes.
Lateral displacement of punctum shows some canalicular, canalicular damage. The canthal angle should be examined for rounding or displacement. The orbital examination includes the extraocular movements, diplopia, hyperesthesia, orbital rim palpation, proptosis, and enophthalmos. Facial head and neck injury should also be examined. So these are the pictures showing lid laceration, enophthalmos, and the medial lower uh, lid laceration involving the canalicular system. General surgical consideration is the most important is to localize the extent and depth of the injury. Decontamination by high flow irrigation should be done by along with removal of any apparent foreign material. Restore the integrity of the wound in five basic com components that is the anterior lamella, posterior lamella, canthal tendons, upper and lower canaliculi and levator complex, the last three being the most important. In eyelid laceration, uh, it is said to be simple if there is skin and muscle involvement with little tissue loss. In this, good irrigation and refuse, uh, remove the devitalized tissue and horizontal muscles approximate themselves, but the vertical muscles are sutured by vicral H0. Complex uh, lacerations are the stellate lacerations with tissue loss and uh, injury going deeper into the muscle. So in these cases, the devitalized tissue is removed and then the uh, un undermined, uh, the edges are freshened up and then the suture is placed. Care should be taken to not shorten the anterior lamella so as to cause, cause a retraction later. Marginal laceration, the margin of the wound is freshened to create straight and parallel edges and the tarsal excision is done perpendicular to the wound margin. Traumatic levator dehiscence is if the septum is disrupted and orbital fat is prolapsed, levator complex should be identified and repaired. Detached levator should be resutured to the tarsal plate as its normal at attachment level. Canalicular and lacrimal system injury should be repaired as soon as possible. The diagnosis is by direct visualization or probing by Bowman's probe. Stent is placed across the transected portion of seaward canaliculus and two vital sutures are placed at anterior and posterior end of the canaliculi. Lid repair is done using Mercer 60 and then the vital sutures are approximated. Stent can be left for three to six months. Medial end of the seaward canaliculi is identified by fluorescent dye, viscoelastic or air with normal saline pool in the uh, medial canthal area. The optic nerve injury could be because of direct, direct penetrating injury to the nerve, optic canal fracture, blunt forehead trauma, and the clinical feature include uniocular uh, decrease in vision, afferent pupillary defect, and scotoma with normal fundus and clear media. The prognosis depends upon the visual acuity, history of loss of consciousness, lack of visual recovery after 48 hours, abnormal VEP, and presence of optic canal fracture. Management is high dose IV and methylprednisolone for 48 hours and then the tapering of it. Orbital fracture, the uh, first sign that we see is either exophthalmos, if it is a roof fracture and there is herniation of the uh, anterior cranial uh, structures and the chronic hematic cyst. Enophthalmos is seen in floor fracture and psychiatrical changes causing uh, the uh, fibrosis. If the lateral orbital rim is intact, hurtles or lute exophthalmometer is used and if not, then much exophthalmometer can be used in which uses the eyebrow and cheek as the, as the reference point. So in cases of fracture, globe displacement has to be seen. Then the orbital rim should be palpation, uh, palpated to look about apparent uh, uh, fracture site. Intercanthal distance is uh, increased. That is, the telecanthus is seen in cases of soft tissue injury and the mid-facial mid fractures. And uh, if the ratio of interpupillary distance and intercanthal uh, distance is less than 2, point, 2 is to 1, then that is significant to show telecanthus. Nasolacrimal drainage system is examined, infraorbital nerve sensation is checked, orbital emphysema is uh, seen, ocular motility is checked, post duction test is done, and the pupillary response is checked. The investigation, the plane radiograph is used, uh, is uh, ordered, the waters view. In this, we, the, it is blowout fracture is very clearly evident. The Calvin luck view is done specifically for superior orbital fissure and the frontal sinus, uh, and the lateral projection is done for roof lateral margin with frontal sphenoid and maxillary sinus. The Reese view is done for the optic foramina and the cranial base view is for the sinuses and the zygomatic arc and lateral wall. The CT scan is most useful in initial assessment of trauma. Axial scans is done for the medial, lateral and posterior wall of the orbit and the coronal scans for the orbital floor and inferior rectus muscle. Pony fractures, soft tissue incarceration, subperiosteal hematoma, intraocular foreign body and the vascul vascular lesions are well defined in CT scans. Default classification, the uh, facial fractures are divided into three uh, 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 three types, that is the leaf for type 1, that is the horizontal plane of fracture that separates the teeth from the upper face. Leaf for 2 is the pyramidal fracture with extension into the medial wall and the floor of orbit and leaf for 3 is the craniofacial disjunction. The tripod fracture is the fracture of zygomatic arc on its posterior, inferior and lateral articulation but if there is no displacement, no repair is needed. If displaced and depressed, then open, open reduction and internal fixation or closed reduction is done. 
Oral surgeon should be involved when mandibular excursion and dental occlusion is affected. Orbital roof fracture can be life-threatening due to the direct CNS in an injury, intracranial, foreign body, dural tear causing CSF rhinorrhea, brain abscess or meningitis. It, if it is large enough, then repair by primary pericranium or bone graft is done. Medial wall fracture, fracture is uh, harsh. evident and emphysema. It is generally self-limiting. Orbital floor fracture can be direct if the orbital rim is, inferior orbital rim is fractured. And if it is it's said to be indirect, if the floor is fractured with the rim intact, the direct signs of orbital floor fracture is the globe ptosis and an acute enophthalmos. And uh, indirect signs include orbital emphysema, intraorbital paresthesia, and restricted globe motility. Smaller roof fracture are more prone to cause muscle entrapment. The management, the indication is only if there is a diplopia, gross enophthalmos, or hypophthalmos. Timing depends upon the associated injury, degree of impairment, and patient's age and condition. We should wait for the edema, to, uh, edema and hemorrhage to subside, and steroid can have a resolution of edema. Surgical approach, subciliary, translate inferior orbital rim approach, calvel luck approach, or transconjunctival cul de sac approach. Orbital septum should be preserved. Autologous or alloplastic implant can be used. Calvic calvarium is the graft of choice. And alloplastic, if we go, we go for alloplastic implant, then how medica bone cement is the choice. Contusion is the crushing of uh, subcutaneous muscle and connective tissue with secondary hemorrhage and edema. The management is ice pack for the initial 24 hours and later the hot packs. Uh, initial uh, indication for IND is infected and tense hematoma or the large hematomas. Complication could be uh, infection, abscess, or necrosis of the overlying sin, skin. Abrasion is treated by copious irrigation and cleaning of foreign uh, body and necrotic tissue by prophylactic antibiotic ointment. Partially avulsed or rolled edges could be uh, rolled out and sutured in place. If wound is deeper than dermis, then sur surgical repair is warranted. Edema is due to intravascular leakage into the soft tissue, lateral spread prevented by the fascia or, of fibros or malar and nasojugal folds, can obscure a penetrating eye injury or restrict the extraocular movements. Oral steroid can hasten the resolution. Hemorrhage is managed conservatively if there is no threat to vision. Immediate intervention is needed if there is optic dysfunction, optic nerve dysfunction, dangerously elevated IOP and retinal or choroidal ischemia. Blood may remain loculated to form chronic hematic cysts known as cholesterol granuloma, and it could collect in the subtenal space, intraconal, extraconal, subperiosteal or the nerve sheath space, and according to that, the type of proptosis is seen. Carotid cavernous fistula can be seen. A high flow fistula is seen generally in trauma, and that is uh, the clinical features include painful ophthalmoplasia, diplopia, periorbital edema, chemosis, proptosis, conjunctival congestion, and elevated IOP. The signs could be orbital pulsation, cox scleral vessels, ocular cranial brood, uh, uh, choroidal thickening, retinal venous congestion, ptosis, and tinnitus. On MRI, there is dilated uh, superior orbital vein. Emphysema is caused by the pressure gradient forces air across a disruption of the PNS and orbital bone and in the orbital tissue. In case of one-way valve effect, optic nerve and retinal ischemia with blindness can occur that leads to orbital compartment syndrome. An emergency decompression is needed in visual loss, markers when pupil or CRO. Tosis is due to eyelid edema or hemorrhage. Ophthalmoplegia could be because of edema, hemorrhage, emphysema, nerve injury, muscle entrapment or contusion and CC, uh, carotid cavernous fistula. So there was a case of 10-year-old male child with com uh, complaints of pain in the left eye, sudden loss of vision in the left eye, epistaxis, swollen upper lid, superficial burns on the face more pronounced on the left side. He had a history of firecracker injury with no history of loss of con consciousness. So on local examination, uh, there was a left-sided facial edema, tenderness on the anterior aspect of left maxillary sinus, left-sided epistaxis, lip angioderma, Disrupted left eye globe, superficial burn marks on the entire face and hairs on the anterior scar were, burnt, were burnt and mottled. Right eye examination was within normal limits, except some, for some uh, superficial burns on both lids and eyebrows. On radiological investigation, there was anterior lateral and inferior wall of maxillary sinus was uh, uh, fractured with 13 mm fracture segment in the sinus, undisplaced fracture of the cribriform plate. There was ruptured right eye, left eye globe with multiple foreign bodies seen anterior to the ruptured globe and displaced fracture of the medial and inferior wall of the orbit. So the firstly, that we had uh, stab stabilized with the IV fluids. IV antibiotics were started. Topical antibiotics and regular feeding, cleaning was done. Consequently, after EN ENT and OMFS clearance, left eye exenteration was done. So this was day two, two of trauma. This was the uh, day five of uh, after post-op, and this was the one-month follow-up of the child. This is a 13-year-old female with wooden stick injury, came with low, left eye, lower lid laceration and canalicular damage, and the repair was done by pro, pro, uh, putting a stent on in the can canaliculi. Thank you.
excellent presentation dr pragati and uh, though it is a very vast topic but you have given very good overview of uh, what to do or what not to do and how to proceed a case of a trauma ocular adenoxal injury and uh, anything from the panelist or any person would like to add actually this topic is uh, almost like it is very difficult to organize in the one presentation because each and every topic top if uh, every uh, injury needs uh, elaborate uh, discussion on that and presentation individually so it, with the with the uh, with the sort of time really a very excellent presentation and uh, she covered a lot and to keep in mind that this may happen in a uh, orbital trauma or a distal trauma that is more important and uh, once unless it will be in our mind we will not go for that and the results are miraculous now the people are taking up for the rehabilitation and other part as well so you have to be very careful even if we are not able to give the vision to the patient at least give the good cosmesis to the patient so that he can be on a uh, edge he will not be less than the other and uh, one thing for the yeah. to cover yeah one thing i would like to Uh, Welcome, Doctor Atul. Uh, Doctor Pragati, a very nice presentation. Uh, very well said. I understand the topic was very vast, but when you talk about lids, did you forget to mention about the gray line? I mean, we are sort of older surgeons. We always tend to swear by the gray line. You know, when you talk about lid lid injury, please do mention about gray line, and you have to maintain the anatomical structure of the eyelid. so gray line is important please do bear that in mind bali ban well, okay. well hello and yeah, dr pami go ahead ha uh, uh, yeah one point i want to add sir if in emergency if a patient comes with a trauma to the ocular structure uh, first we have to stabilize the patient that we have to do the abc that airway the breathing and circular after that one thing we have to note in the pupillary reaction which is very important if you want to save the vision if the patient comes to you in the emergency within 6 to 8 hour and if there is rapd or markers on pupil please start methylprednisolone to save the vision from the traumatic optic neuropathy the dose i have i have saved so other eyes if the patient comes in the emergency department of in my medical college what yeah. dose do you use is it to Pardon, be used sir? in all cases no if rapd is there sir no suppose patient yeah. come with uh, blunt trauma vision loss you could not find any significant uh, uh, yeah. finding to corroborate with the visual loss so you can expect that uh, yeah. there yeah. might be some uh, uh, the trauma then the uh, in those cases there, you can uh, start uh, methylprednisolone methyl okay Very what good. should be the dose of methylprednisolone uh, sir 1 mg per kg per day for 3 days sir actually it is divided into as for the ontt trial it is 250 mg uh, every 4 hourly for 3 days it is total 3 grams in 3 days with 5% dextrose so fluid overload should, uh, fluid overload should also be looked for so, so we, we follow that, that, that guideline on ontt trial guideline we follow in other also ontt trial is regarding dexamethasone dexamethasone 200 mg yeah 200 mg yeah what is the dose of ontt trial is not for traumatic uh, optic neuro no it is not for not mean the, the trial is but we follow that guideline only because it is the safety evaluation of the methylprednisolone in, on in this trial so you have to use so, yeah so many a time many a time in emergency in icu the patient is already on a dexamethasone therapy yeah yeah i know the, oh, fine fine That's yes okay. yes, yes. patient is not so, in icu so the patient decision is so you go clinic then you can use Yes, the decision is to shift from dexamethasone to methylprednisolone, and it must be in consultation with the neuro ophthalmologist or the surgeon there, because general condition also depends upon many other things. So uh, why why do you shift from dexamethasone to uh, methylprednisolone when you are uh, you have already added dexa in the adequate dose? Then yes, there is no yes. need of shifting to methylprednisolone. Yeah, no, it's equally good. Doctor Ajit, uh, actually, I have seen many cases who are. Uh, uh, a normal patient clinically they have only specifically optic nerve injury yeah yes so yes. in all those cases high dose of steroids for at least 7 to 10 days 
is recommended and uh, yes. uh, if it uh, because this will reduce the inflammation and edema and that's it that is going to save this uh, further optic nerve injury and uh, this uh, recommendation is basically for uh, to prevent the uh, further injury to optic nerve injury which is specifically present in blunt like a uh, uh, ball injury or something like that in which our, ro our road traffic accident in which there is fracture uh, injury concussion to the optic nerve and uh, but the patient is already ambulatory and they are doing well and uh, yes, then if there is no sign of pupillary sign if mm -hmm. there is no pupillary sign in any case we can assume that there is no traumatic optic neuropathy and edema in that it's uh, many a time it's a situation so uh, i think uh, to every uh, agreed with doctor dr. many a time optic neuropathy also distorts the also distort like optic, the... optic neuritis here the yeah, everything yes. is all right but the vision is decreased and pupillary sign is uh, rapd is there then only we assume that there is yes. uh, inflammation to or injury to the or concussion concussion to the optic nerve uh, yes sir definitely sir definitely i agree sir Uh, so, Dr. Prakriti, one question is there. In case of blunt trauma, many a times there is traumatic metastasis. So, how mm -hmm. to interpret whether there is RAPD or not? Look, other I may na. Acha, question unse hai. Sorry. Ah, uh, Prakriti, answer it. Traumatic metastasis agar hai. Very, very. What else would you like to see? We can uh, see for the other I, meaning con consensual. Uh, consensual, right? Yes. Yeah. consensual reflex can be checked for that nahi sahi bol rahi ho theek hai isme zor se bolo ha on the other uh, the after shining the light on the other eye the consensual reflex could be checked uh, in the uh, affected eye sir yeah definitely is pure exercise ka matlab hai ki patient jab aaye to aapko sara pata hona chahiye ki isme kya kya cheez ho sakta hai abhi aapko khojna baaki hai bas yahi maqsad hai iska बाकी जब आप खोज लेंगे तो कहीं ना कहीं से जवाब तो ढूंढ ही लेंगे और उसका मैनेजमेंट भी ढूंढ लेंगे इसलिए कोई ऐसा बड़ी बात नहीं आइडिया है कि उसमें जैसे पहले भी बताया किसी ने कहा थीमा देख करके बाकी छोड़ दिए कर्नल परफोरेशन देख के बाकी छोड़ दिए तो वो चीज नहीं होना चाहिए पेशेंट को अगर नहीं समझ में आ रहा तो एडमिट कर लो भर्ती कर सकते हैं आप लोग तो बड़ा हॉस्पिटल में जहाँ की कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल ज्यादा होता है ओपीडी में जैसे अग्रवाल बता रहे थे केल की तीन तीन डॉक्टर के पास जाता है तो पता नहीं इसलिए जाता है कि सब डॉक्टर कहीं भूखे नहीं मर जाए तो सब <laughs> और कोई बात नहीं से ठीक का मतलब ही है कि रिलेटिव डिफेक्ट अगर अदर अगर डिस्टॉर्टेड है तो डिफिकल्ट टू लिसेट बट कंसेंसुअल लाइट इफेक्ट वी कैन ऑलवेज सी इन द नॉर्मल नॉर्मल लाइफ सो थैंक्स thanks again dr pragati and i move on to another presentation with the permission of the house now it is dr farhat from uh, nmch who is going to present uh, traumatic subluxation a case report dr farhat please share your presentation my audible sir am i audible sir yeah it is audible and uh, you, uh, we can well see your presentation also Good evening, sir. Myself, Dr. Farhat Parveen, second year PG, MS Sabta, NMCH. Thanks, boss, to give this opportunity. Today, my topic of presentation is traumatic subluxated lens, a case report. Introduction. Ocular trauma is one of the important cause of ocular morbidity in developing countries. Lens subluxation caused by many reason and most common is ocular trauma followed by ocular surgery and spontaneous subluxation due to hypermature cataract. Ocular trauma and surgery exert an external force on the lens journal. case report a 75 year old male presented to i opd and i think net is yes but now with complaint of limb he reported a history of 
He reported a history of trauma to right eye one month ago with wood stick. Systemic history was not significant. We can see in this image in fairly subluxated lens. On examination, his mm -hmm. visual acuity was hand movement with PR yeah, acuity well, uh, in right eye and 624 in left eye. IOP was 18 mm SD and 17 mm SD in right eye and left eye respectively. Extraocular movement were full in all gazes in both eye. Confrontation visual field were full to finger count in both eye. On slit lamp examination, cornea were clear in both eye. There was iodonesis in right eye and the lens show inferior subluxated cataractous lens with moderate severity as shown in the picture. The lens is uncovered 25 to 50% of dilated pupil and uh, degree of subluxation is mm. from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Materials, no? Rest anterior segment is within normal limit. Left eye shows IMSC and rest anterior segment was within normal limit. Fundus examination were unremarkable in both eye. Vitreous was clear in both eye. CD ratio was 0.4 is to 1 in right eye and left eye respectively. Disc flat disc distinct margin and no excavation or notching noted on optic nerve in both eye. Management. We have two management plan. Plan 1 is manual in small incision cataract surgery with CTR capsular tension ring implantation with IOL implantation. Plan 2 is manual in small incision cataract surgery with scleral fixating IOL. In this patient, we manage by plan 1. A 6 mm sclerocorneal tunnel was made. Capsular axis was done. After capsular bag stabilization by capsular tension ring, a 6 mm PMMA IOL implantation was done into capsular bag and haptic were aligned in subluxation meridian. If capsular bag stability is not found, then we will go for scleral fixation IOL. This is the image of first post of day. Patient had clear cornea with well centered IOL. His uncorrected visual acuity was 6 by 36 in right eye and 6 by 24 in left eye. After one month, best corrected visual acuity is 6 by 6 in right eye and 6 by 9 in left eye. Discussion. Patient diagnosed with subluxated lens secondary to blunt ocular trauma. No, patient had no family history of Marfan syndrome, pseudoexfoliation syndrome, homocystinuria or well marchesani syndrome. As all of these genetic conditions are mostly mm, bilateral subluxation rather than unilateral subluxation, a sudden reduction in vision following trauma may cause, may suggest commotion retina or retinal detachment. Commotion retina or Berlin edema could have occurred at the time of injury. This case was managed by manual small incision cataract surgery with CTR implantation with PMMA IOL. The reason for PMMA IOL implantation was they are rigid, less bulky, and more stable than foldable IOL. Haptic of these IOL also stretch capsular bag, gives extra support to subluxated capsular bag. However, patient was correctable to 6 by 6 right eye following refraction, and fundus findings were unremarkable postoperatively. Conclusion. Blunt ocular trauma can cause a multitude of ocular complications like ecchymosis, hyphema, subconjunctival hemorrhage, cataract, extraocular muscle entrapment, angle recession, iridodialysis, cyclodialysis, lens subluxation, and retinal detachment or break. A full comprehensive eye examination is necessary to rule out these complications. Genetic causes should also be ruled out, especially if subluxation is bilateral. Treatment for this complication can be complex. However, prognosis can still be excellent following ocular trauma. Thank you. Very good presentation, Dr. Farhat. Uh, I think uh, you have covered well. And uh, I always wonder the amount of trauma leading to subluxation. Uh, we could not find any retinal uh, problem or other problem. So uh, in my mind, there happens to be some weakness uh, of the genuine that might uh, aggravate after the trauma. <laughs> so <laughs> it is very surprising to find that uh, isolated. Uh, I have seen many cases, traumatic subluxation, post-trauma subluxation and all.
so doctor, you, one how 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 many clock hours was there in uh, yeah. sub-luxation? Degree of sub-luxation? Degree? Degree of sub-luxation is uh, five clock hours from nine o'clock to two o'clock. Nine to two o'clock. Okay. And Dr. Niles would like to add something? Uh, yeah, I was asking that uh, uh, you said that MICS was the procedure and this thing was done. So what would have been the choice given a PECO or a MICS, SICS? That would be preferred because more <laughs> handling is there in SIC is definitely more than a FACO. Secondly, uh, up to what clock hour do you go for a CTR or a, a segmental ring implantation? And uh, when do you go in for a SFI? These are important things to know when you're dealing with subluxation. Right. FACO massification can be done. But this case was managed by uh, SICS. And, uh, okay, fine. But just to know that because in SICS, yeah, yeah. the yes. handling is definitely more than if, if the clock, if you have decided that this will be uh, CTR, uh, the case will be, uh, in the case you will use CTR, okay? Yes, sir. Then you want a minimum handling of those zones. Yes, sir. So, SICS is a little bit more traumatic than a FACO. Yes. Number one. And number two, if the, mm. if the, uh, the extent of subluxation is more than 180 degree, then it depends upon the surgeon's skill whether he wants to go in for a CTR and a segmental ring or he goes in for a SFI. This always remains a matter of debate. I want, this, I want the comment of panelists on this issue. The I think I think I also agree with Nidhis because given the choice between FACO emulsification and subluxated uh, lens and SICS, I would definitely prefer a FACO emulsification because that is a more uh, controlled closed chamber manipulation of the lens, whereas SICS is more open and uh, is liable to lead to more subluxation. So a safer sir, choice. Sir, one. Yeah. Uh, regarding the FACO emulsification, I can say just if you don't have just in the for the beginners who doesn't know the direct chop methods, it is devastating for them to just have it. So in that case, basically, I mean, I mean, I mean, the, first line, yes. for the, the first line I said, given the choice. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if, if the choice, uh, yeah. Okay. Actually, you can. What we are discussing, basically what we are discussing uh, is yeah, not I mean, that I mean, what we did in this case. It was very nicely done. It was very well done. Mm -hmm. But what is the best procedure? Give it an option. This also yes. must be known yes. because it could be SICS could be very atraumatic in your hand. Yes. But in general, it is a more traumatic procedure in subluxated cases where you have you are very liable to increase the subluxation very easily during any of the maneuvers. So that's why the controlled no, uh, FACO emulsification is definitely the process uh, procedure of choice. But yes, this case was handled. In the beginners, you have to be even more careful. What I said right now, it can be done. Nile, but you must Nile, be beginners, ke liye ye to contraindication hi hona if rather, you think rather that uh, you are a beginner so, and you are not, uh, you are a, if you are, you think that you are a beginner, you should not attempt handle, to handle, handle, handle it. Yeah, refer it to more yeah. experienced person. Yeah, subluxated is not for beginners. Definitely, sir. This is this is uh, also we can take it in other way uh, just to come up that uh, in given scenario, if somebody has did not have a PACO machine and if they want to do these cases, so it was a very right way to plan in a two step and take the consent from the patient and accordingly they did well. The result was very good, so we can accept in that manner. But definitely, PACO, PACO with a uh, capsular axis uh, segment, CTS and CTR, as well as capsule care devices would have been a very good choice. We are not being critical about the way the things have been managed, but we are being critical about the scientific explanation, what we should know. Yeah. Because when you are doing this kind of a case, you must bear in mind that you are liable to increase the you, uh, I, 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 when you are doing a exactly. And you may land up in ICC. Yeah. 
Yes, Dr. Nilesh's point is to say that if you are getting subluxed cataract like this, you must refer to, if you are not competent, then you refer to some higher center or some other surgeon. That's why, that is what you want to say. And that it is what you want to say. Paper. If that procedure is better uh, for the patient. Yeah, definitely. If it would be definitely better in my mind. Uh, and, and depending, what? On, depending on, of course, uh, who is the uh, operating surgeon. And with a vitrectomy backup. Yeah. Yeah, with a retina. And the, com so the comfort and ease of the operating surgeon as well with the PACO as well as the SIS procedure. Yeah. Nice. So what we are discussing here is a nicely managed case and in accordance with what would be the best. This is what we are discussing, sure. and we ought Definitely. to know. Fact, Fully, would have I agree with best. you, Doctor Nilesh. And and Doctor Farhat, one more question: At what stage you put it put in the CTR? Yes. Whether you put in the CTR before you take out the the nucleus and the cortex or you do it at what stage of the surgery you mm -hmm. prefer to do it after hydro resection after capsular axis hydro resection uh, we can uh, put ctr after uh, capsular axis after hydro resection or after nucleus uh, uh, prolapse but uh, better it to put after hydro resection i think i, I, I so also Yes. Sir, actually, CTR should be uh, done when you think that now the uh, capsule or bag will be unstable. That uh, is, uh, doing maximum of the surgery, which can be permitted in that given situation. Because once you put uh, CTR, many steps might become difficult. One. Number two, uh, there may be difficulty in put, pushing the uh, CTR, CTR. Uh, in a, a, a well uh, distended uh, uh, bag in which there is a lot of lens matter and nucleus. So until you have, uh, the, there is an uh, instability of the bag, one should not put the CTR. This is the, my take, this is my take. So majority, doc, majority surgeons prefer okay. prior to uh, lens implant, sir. Uh, exactly. After but, finishing the, uh, when you think that then, uh, yeah, yeah. Dr. Now this is a, uh, the bag is not very stable while doing IA etc. Then that should be put before, just before the uh, lens implantation. Sir, is a common, sir, sir well, there is a common yes. dictum, sir, that CTR should be uh, implanted as late as possible till the bag is stable. Number one. And initially, you can take help from the capsule care devices to complete the procedure. And otherwise, it is very difficult to remove the cortex once you have put the CTR in another plane. But, but, also, but, there are, yes. Yeah, yeah, please, please, please carry on. Yes, sir. And uh, definitely, the five plus hours uh, is a big, uh, I will say, 180 degree, uh, more than 180 degree of general dialysis is a contraindication for CTR. You can add with us uh, with the CTS and other devices uh, with the help of, you can put a CTR with the CTS, but there are multiple uh, suggestions, but best way to do is with the FACO, use the capsule care in the beginning. And once you have removed the nucleus and as far as the capsule you have removed, put the CTR and put the IO. Sir. Because uh, once there is a dislocation, the CTR might also get dislocated in the posterior chamber. So handle this uh, di dialysis with the hook and then put the ring after the finishing, uh, after finishing the FACO. Sir, regarding the FACO, just uh, yeah, we have a different view, but in SICS, basically CTR, we should put after delivery of the nucleus. Prolapsing of the nucleus and uh, nucleus delivery, then then uh, do the IA, and, and thereafter we have to put the uh, put the CTR. So in SICS, if you want to put the CTR, only one option is there. You just after removing the whole content of the nucleus as well as the EP nucleus also, by the in that case. Here in this case, it is better to just have the CTR just finishing all the tasks, just to stability for the lenses, not for the just to support. You need to support if you don't have just a big axis, then it is very devastating in cases of the SICS. FACO, you have a 
two choice either you put before hand just uh, nucleotomy and all this thing after uh, nucleotomy no, 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 you can no. just but in sics always you have to put the ctr just after delivery of the nucleus absolutely i agree <laughs> After delivery well, of the well, nucleus, well, well, point after the uh, cortical aspiration also. Yeah, yeah. Also, I said that. Sir. That is what just uh, before putting the uh, before also putting also the IUL. Just you have to yes. But 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 in phaco emulsification, you can put it at any yes, stage before at any stage. After hydro, yeah, after yes, hydro dissection. Hydro dissection. Yes, to sir. put it at the last. Yes. 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 So now time to move on to another presentation. Uh, and it is Dr. Ali from uh, Ali Kashar from DMCH, and uh, he is going to present on uh, long-term sequelae of blunt ocular trauma. You might be quite aware, well aware that uh, uh, there has to be some long-term sequelae after the blunt trauma. So, what are those? So, we are going to listen from uh, Dr. Ali Kashar from DMCH. Thank you, Nagendra. Please share your uh, please share our presentation. Thanks. A very good evening to respected chairperson panelists and learned audience over here. Thank you, Dr. Nagendra sir, Chair, Chairman ERC for providing me this opportunity to present. My topic of presentation is long-term sickly of blunt trauma. Blunt trauma in definition refers to direct blow to the eye caused by the impact of an object. Patient with blunt trauma should be under close observation for early diagnosis of late complications such as cataract glaucoma and proliferative vitro retinopathy. Coming to anterior segment sequelae, there could be ptosis that could be either mechanical due to the lid, uh, heaviness of the lid, that is uh, due to extensive scarring of the lid, and it could be other paralyt paralytic due to LPS paralysis, which in turn is supplied by the third cranial nerve. Coming to eyelid anterior lamellar shortening, in case of vertical wound of the eyelid laceration that heals by fibrosis, leads to the shortening eyelid anterior lamellar shortening. Coming to conjunctiva and cornea, most lesions such as subconjunctival hemorrhages and conjunctival edema or corneal epithelial abrasions resolves without leaving any sequelae. In case of long-standing corneal edema that may be due to endothelial disturbances or breaks in the desmids membrane may leave permanent scars which may be associated with neovascularization later on. Coming to blood staining of the cornea. It is due to red blood cells infiltrating the corneal stroma, uh, secondary to hyphema or persistent IOP for more than persistent high IOP for more than 48 hours. Uh, the, high, the blood staining slowly clears from the periphery to center, and the whole process can could even take uh, for more than two years. In cases of sclera, the cases of globe rupture is found to be 3.5% of severe blunt trauma. In globe rupture, there is severe periocular or intraocular hemorrhages could be there. The low IAP, less than 5 mmg is uh, uh, determining. Uh, because of low IP, there is deep anterior chamber. And for uh, uh, posterior rupture, the prognosis is, visual prognosis is very poor. Iris, pupil, and ciliary body. Iris, because of its uh, mobility, lack of support, and uh, Thinness, it's more prone to damage by blunt ocular injury. Lesion of virus is characteristically failed to heal and remains a hallmark of previous ocular trauma. The pupillary margin of the iris appears to be the most susceptible region to trauma and small iris notches are observed in most patients. Post-traumatic, there is post-traumatic patchy atrophy of iris trauma and there could be pigmentary changes, that is pigment clumps on the interior iris surface. Pupil. There, is a, there could be permanent traumatic midriasis and pupil being unreactive to direct and consensual light stimulation. Ciliary body, uh, angular cystic glaucoma caused by ciliary body dialysis. Anterior chamber, hyphema that is hemorrhage because of uh, bleeding from ciliary body vessels or due to iris lacerations. Complication could be re-bleeding, secondary glaucoma and corneal blood staining. The risk of uh, glaucoma, the risk of glaucoma is reported to be 19% in case of blunt ocular trauma. Uh, blunt trauma could be contusion and lamellar laceration. In case of delay onset uh, glaucoma caused by contusion injury, either an open angle glaucoma or an angle closer. Open angle could be angle recession glaucoma, lens particle glaucoma, phaco anaphylactic glaucoma, hemolytic, hemosidrotic, and steroid induced glaucoma. Angle closer glaucoma includes lens subluxation or dislocation and phacomorphic glaucoma. 
the delay onset glaucoma of lamellar laceration may be either open or angle closure type open angle glaucoma includes lens particle glaucoma ghost cell glaucoma epithelial ingrowth glaucoma inflammatory steroid induced glaucoma and glaucoma associated with intraorbital foreign bodies coming to angle closure glaucoma it could be due to peripheral anterior synechia or posterior synechia pupillary block secondary to inflammation or flat anterior chamber pacomorphic glaucoma coming to lens uh, traumatic cataract due to anterior and posterior subcapsular uh, opacity or opaque cortical suture with characteristic rosette shaped cataract uh, that is late onset rosette shaped cataract in case of traumatic cataract osseous ring iris uh, pigment epithelium impression on the anterior lens capsule coming to posterior segments equally in case of vitreous there could be synchysis scintillans that is cholesterolosis bulbi uh, this follows vitreous hemorrhages common in men in fifth decades and is a unilateral condition choroid choroidal rupture healing sequelae tear in the inelastic brooks membrane the chorio capillaries and the retinal pigment epithelium neurosensory retina otter choroid and sclera are intact Healing occurs because of fibrovascular proliferation, fibrous scar formation, retinal pigment epithelial hyperplasia, choroidal neovascular membrane formation. Coming to retina, central vision loss may occur following commotio retini, Berlin's edema, which may be permanent due to retinal pigment epithelium changes and migration, and macular hole formation. Macular hole may follow blunt trauma due to following mechanism: contusion, necrosis, subfoveal hemorrhage, and vitreous traction. Uh, proliferative vitroretinopathy. Proliferative vitroretinopathy is one possible late complication after blunt trauma. Poor visual outcome is expected during vitroretinal surface traction created by proliferative membrane. PVR is observed in more than 70% patients with open globe injuries involving posterior segment and usually progresses to tractional retinal detachment. These are some pictures of anterior segment complication of blunt trauma. Hyphema, sphincter tear, iridodialysis, vosges ring, cataract, lens subluxation, angle dissection, and globe rupture. The posterior segment complication of blunt trauma, commotio retini, choroidal rupture, and hemorrhage, evulsion of vitreous base, and retinal, retinal dialysis, equatorial tears, macular hole, and optic neuropathy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ali. Thank you, sir. Uh, are you going to present uh, another presentation? Uh, or No, sir. I prepared just okay, one. Okay, only, only one. Okay. Thanks, uh, Dr. Ali, for your elaborate presentation. Uh, one thing, any panelists could add, like to add anything? What is the duration of a ptosis surgery after a case of a traumatic ptosis? When would you like to consider the patient for a surgical surgery? Pardon, sir. What? When would you like to go in for a ptosis correction in cases of a traumatic ptosis which has been there? Uh, ptosis correction. You got my point. When yes, you sir. would go yeah. for a surgical correction? Yes, sir. But uh, at least three uh, months. Please stop screen sharing, Dr. Ali. Then you can have a screen share. Yes. Sorry. Anything would like to answer, Dr. Nilesh? Question. So this is we would like to know, na? The, the patients had a traumatic process. Yes. There. Sir. Yes. Sir. You want to wait for the things to subside, and then when you want to take it up for surgery, would you take it in the first month, second month? Or would you like to wait for a certain period of time? That is what what is the consensus uh, period, I would say, to wait, to take up for the surgery. At least six months, sir. Yeah. Less than six months. Six yeah. months less than six months. Uh, okay. At least six months uh, but for a spontaneous resolution or the reason uh, being that there are multiple traumatic cases, you know, the resolution can happen or whatever fibrotic changes or things are happening. Then you would take up for surgery to decide your procedure, what you have to do to get the predictable result. Otherwise, you may go in for the surgery early and you may have the difficulties and an unpredictable result. In that. Number two, uh, what you said was in a subluxated lens, 
uh, case the report had, was also discussed, there are many cases in which uh, you don't have a full dilated view of the pupil. Huh? So yes, in sir. trauma, one thing what I want to point out is that while taking up a case for a traumatic cataract for surgery, where the pupil has not fully dilated and you haven't been able to fully shed out the zonules, you have to be a little bit prepared that there could be a subtle subluxation mm, on the table, that. discovered on the table when you're doing your excess and the yes. wobble. Yes. Because in the figure, what you showed a subluxated lens, the pupil was not dilated in your last slide. And usually that happens in yes, traumatic sir. cases. So this is one important point in cases of, because these cases you will operate later on. There is some subtle subluxation, two clock hours. Then a cataract yes, develops in due course of time. Patient is corrected with refractive error for quite a long time. That subluxation is causing significant astigmatism, but you carry on. And when he comes up for surgery, the pupil doesn't dilate fully. So you're not pretty sure that, yes, subluxation is here or not. In a frank case, you're very clear. So this is one important point. Sir, asymmetry of anterior chamber depth, depth is... So uh, those are frank cases, Asit. I'm talking of those subtle cases where you need to be prepared in yes, post-trauma. Exactly. Post-trauma. But asymmetry of anterior uh, chamber depth is uh, well, very good. Yeah, Indicate. Uh, mm -hmm. And up to, if in the case <laughs> of trauma, how... As far as the long-term long -term oh. complications are concerned, uh, I think rehabilitation, uh, uh, there is a very common psychopathy even the uh, they are the back to the work uh, in the those uh, patients who have a loss of glow and loss of the facial configurations. This is also very important structure. So we can assure them with the customized ocular prosthesis and the other things, and uh, they, we can say them that this is uh, this can be a hope to their near future. Also, we can be a guide to selection of certain. Uh, 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 a professional carrier because a person who has a, not a good vision they cannot go for the railways and other things i think this should be highlighted and we should we can tell them beforehand so that they can go for the certain they will not waste their time uh, in those segments i think it, yes, it should be added yes sir one one, uh, one doctor uh, asif uh, regarding a uh, yeah, subtle subluxation Yes, sir. Uh, two things one should look for. One is, is there any asymmetry in the pupil? That is anisocoria. That Hello. suggests of any blunt trauma. And we should, you should actively ask for any injury, blunt injury, in, during the childhood or known history of his uh, remembrance. The, is, is there any blunt history of any blunt injury? And these uh, must be... Uh, uh, these patients must be uh, counseled about that uh, they, they, that he may be harboring some dislocation or subluxation and there is high chance of uh, uh, in, uh, complication during the surgery. And once I have uh, uh, seen that there was no nothing such thing, no such thing. But uh, when I put uh, air in the chamber before putting this this uh, yeah, blue ring, the air was uh, shifted to some other side. That is, on sitting posture, there was no, nothing, no iridodonosis, no phacodonosis, and everything was normal. But while sleeping, some vitreous was coming into the anterior chamber. So, but uh, most of the time, if there is an anisocoria, one should ask for blunt injury. Okay. We are discussing this gray zone. Uh, yeah, one, one more question that comes to the mind, whether all subluxa su subluxations require a surgical procedure or can we, uh, can they move on just like that? Subluxated, subluxation with cataract requires the procedure, if it is... No, no, ju ju just a subluxation, not a cataract. Just a subluxation, if too much, too much of astigmatism is not there, it is disturbing. There is clear cut guidelines. If a phacic zone is more than a phacic zone, you, you, we can wait. And if it is uh, more than a phacic yes. Yeah. So that, uh, yes, that, 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 is, that is what I was trying to stress that all subluxations do not require to be surgically treated. We can conservatively treat them depending on the, the grade of uh, subluxation. And uh, one more thing that comes to the mind is. Uh, the angle decision concept 
the angle recession with a blunt trauma or a penetrating trauma that can happen even after one year to 50 years so that always has to be kept in mind that glaucoma may set in in such cases even later on so they have to be followed up for a pretty long period of time very valid point dr panar ranjan i would like to stress upon the follow up of those cases as you rightly said to look for the glaucoma and uh, uh, later on atrophic hole development and retina detachment or some dialysis or retina detachment might occur even might uh, if there is a corallia rupture or group movement rupture some neovascularization would be there so you have to at least keep up your follow up to the pa- follow up the patient up to at least one one and a half years so जहाँ तक सर्जरी का बात था मेरा ये मानना था सर की हर पेशेंट का अपना अपना रिक्वायर्ड विजन है अगर उसके लीवर उसके लाइवलीहुड में प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है तो सर्जरी को बहुत ऑब्जेक्टिवली ना देख करके सब्जेक्टिवली भी देखा जाना चाहिए कि अगर पेशेंट को प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है तो उसको करके अगर कर सकते हैं ठीक तो कर देना है नहीं, ना कि तो, कोई एक फर्मा में फेट करने की कोशिश नहीं वो 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 तो ग्लोकोमा के साथ भी यही है कि अगर वो गरीब कहीं दूर से आ रहा है वो अपना दवा नहीं डाल सकता है इकोनॉमिकली वेल ऑफ तो उसको ट्रैप क्यों नहीं कर दी आई मीन Sir, but definitely, sir, there is a constant need and common voice um, uh, should be towards a traumatic patient that you need and uh, once once uh, uh, once uh, a traumatic eye is there, there are so many diseases can happen over a period. And uh, just highlighting one one uh, uh, example of. Uh, Uh, rehabilitation part because one settler, uh, the the badminton injury player, she got a accidental injury with a rubber seat, and uh, she has to change the profession uh, from the sports, and she was advised to go to the administrative side and management side, and she did well because she was well prepared before. So that should be that should be given an importance while giving uh, doing the counselling part from the. uh should i move on to another presentation this is last presentation okay i request dr shreya to share her screen and he is going to speak upon the very important medical legal aspect of the trauma we must know what are the implication of if uh, medical medical legally dr shreya please go ahead with your presentation Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. I'll be presenting on the medical legal aspects in ocular trauma. A uh, medical legal case has been defined as an inflicted injury or disease process, where the treating doctor establishes the diagnosis by a thorough history, clinical examination, and investigations, and determines responsibility according to the law of the land. List of medical legal cases: all cases of injuries and burns, all vehicular, factory, or other unnatural accident, cases of unconsciousness where it is where the cause is not clear, suspected or evident poisoning or intoxication. cases brought dead with improper history creating suspicion of an offence cases of suspected self infliction of injuries or attempted suicide medical legal comes to an ophthal- medical legal cases comes to an ophthalmologist when an expert opinion is required or as a treating doctor to an to an medical legal case or a legal proceeding is against the doctor as an expert when an ophthalmic mishap occur in the treatment or a surgery anywhere in free camps or anywhere in the country it is inquired by the government or court a committee of expert ophthalmic doctor is appointed and and as an 
investigating officer, he has to report or depose on oath in the court of law. When an ophthalmologist has treated or examined a case, he has to give opinion as a second expert in trauma or assault or give a certificate for compensation purpose or employee compensation or for insurance and reimbursement. An ophthalmologist's role is to confirm the etiology, assess the depth of injury, grade the type of injury, and establish the severity of the disability. Injuries are of two types, simple injury and grievous injury. Simple injury is one which heals rapidly without leaving permanent uh, deformity. And uh, grievous injury are of eight types. And we have to deal with the second, which is permanent privation of sight of either eye. Medical certificate of injury is given to a patient on demand if injury is simple. Grievous injury is a punishable offense under section uh, 320 of IPC and must be reported to the police. Permanent privation of sight. Privation means loss of basic thing that people need for living. Victim must be permanently deprived of one or both eyesight. Temporary privation does not mean grievous injury. Permanent loss of eyesight does not mean that it should be incurable. Example, an injury that causes corneal opacity is a grievous offense, even though it is a treatable condition. A doctor should give advice only when complete healing has occurred, which may take from six weeks to six months. Only then it can be decided whether a disability is temporary or permanent. When we encounter a medical legal case, uh, either in an emergency or in OPD, then, then first we should stabilize the patient and then a medical legal case number should be allotted and documentation should be done and immediately police need to be informed. Protocol for filing a medical, medical legal report is as under. Uh, police information should be sent in a proper form. Consent of the patient should be taken. Two identif identification marks is to be noted. Time and date should be noted. Proper history in patient's own or guardian's own words is documented. And details of police constable who bought the case should be noted. Examination of the in injury is done in detail and uh, diagram should be drawn whenever necessary. Opinion should be crisp and to the point, avoid abbreviation. Article should be preserved and enumerated. Prepare three copies of the document. One copy is kept at the emergency room. Other is uh, as a hospital record, which should be kept confidential and original is given to the police. General guidelines. If a medical legal case is recorded somewhere else and is referred, it should be treated as MLC, but no new MLC number should be issued. If a case is uh, brought several days after the incident, it should be reported and findings to be noted regarding the patient condition to the patient's present condition. And faculty member should sign along with junior resident or the senior resident. Consent for emergency surgery when no attendant is available can be given by the medical superintendent of the hospital. If emergency medical officer in emergency does not register a case as MLC, but the treating doctor thinks that the case is a MLC, then it should be recorded as MLC and uh, should be considered at any point of time, even if it, it, it is missed initially. In specific cases, if a patient uh, requires evisceration, then a second opinion must be taken from an ophthalmologist and it should be mentioned. For firearm injuries, bullets, lead shots uh, recovered from the wound or body in a firearm injury should be air dried and then put in a bottle, padded with cotton, documented, sealed, and handed over to the police. Mention about the entry and exit wound. Take extra. Hello. Hello? Yeah, carry on, carry on. Take extra of the track or whole body. Never pick the bullet using a metal or tooth forcep. Storage of records. Medical Council of India requires a record to be preserved for a period of three years for operative cases, two years for OPD records in cases of adult, and for 21 years in cases of children. Uh, medical, medical legal case can be encountered by an ophthalmologist when, he, when a legal proceeding is done against him. It can be criminal or civil. It is criminal when there is a, a criminal negligence or disfiguration of face or treatment has caused death of the patient. And it can be civil due to professional misconduct or civil negligence. Professional misconduct. It is the conduct of a medical practitioner during the practice of his profession, which could be regarded as disgraceful 
dishonorable or disrespectful. State Medical Council maintains the disciplinary control. If a doctor is found guilty, then a warning notice can be issued or erasure of name from the medical register can be done, which can be temporary or permanent. Some examples of professional misconduct are uh, unnecessary advertisement, refusing treatment on religious ground, fee sharing, issuing false certificate, appointing unqualified staff, or treating a patient in a drunken state. Professional negligence or malpractice. It is the lack of reasonable skill or knowledge or willful negligence that led to some damage to the patient. It can be an act of omission or commission. Civil negligence is simple absence of care or of skill. There is no violation of law and consent of the patient and contributory negligence are good defenses for the doctor. Criminal negligence is a gross carelessness on doctor's part, it can be tried in court and section uh, 304 a IPC deals with criminal negligence and is and punishment is imprisonment up to two years or fine or both. Documentation is the most important part. Uh, doc uh, proper documentation should be made a habit. A meticulous examination along with important negative signs should be noted. Visual acuity, intraocular pressure, pupillary reaction must be noted. Evidence of malingering and signs which differentiate pre-existing illness from the recent injury should be documented appropriately. Follow-up visits, side effects, and warning signs must be mentioned and explained to the patient. Type records are preferred as eligible handwriting can have deciphering issues in cases of legal claims or peer review. Lastly, visual prognosis must be mentioned. Some litigations against ophthalmologists. Uh, 942 cases of medical negligence was reported to uh, NCDRC, out of which 30 cases were related to ophthalmology between uh, the years 2002 2018. Compensation for cases ranged between rupees 2 lakhs to rupees 1 crore. Uh, most litigation against ophthalmologists are of post op cases of cataract and cornea. Some examples are in a case of vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, in a case, vitreous hemorrhage occurred after a vastin injection and caused temporary blindness. Compensation up to 1 lakh rupees was given. Uh, and the reason the court cited was negligence and deficiency in service on doctor's part. Another, in a case of pterygium surgery, the doctor had advised uh, mitomycin C drops, but he did not uh, write the durations. Show the patient, show the patient continued the treatment that led to damage of his eyes. Contributory negligence by the patient was held by the court. Also, a coolie uh, post cataract surgery did not take rest, and so he developed corneal ulcer while working in the fields. Court held that he should have been instructed about the post op care precautions and follow up. And so, how do we protect ourselves as a doctor? First is uh, proper documentation and have a checklist. Second is uh, giving realistic expe expectations and ensure open, honest communication. Wherever possible, have an electronic backup. Avoid crit criticizing other doctors. A casual back remark can affect patients' confidence. Adopt remedial methods for unhappy patients. Rest indicate is a suit of damage should be filed within two years of occurrence and contributory negligence is simultaneous neg uh, negligence on uh, doctors and patients part. Also, uh, uh, before surgery, uh, uh, take fitness, physical fitness from MD physician, always have a, quali a qualified uh, standby anesthetist, o OT should have uh, oxygen cylinder and a written informed consent in patient uh, language should be taken. There is a recent guidelines issued uh, by the Supreme Court for prosecution of doctors. Uh, uh, this is to protect doctors from frivolous or unjust prosecution against medical negligence. Su Supreme Court has uh, held that preliminary inquiry should be made time bound. Uh, the investigating agency should refer the complaint to district medical board. The district medical board will examine all the allegations within two weeks and forward its recommendation to investigating agency. In case of dissatisfaction by IA or doctors, refer to uh, state medical board in two weeks. State medical board would examine the matter in two weeks and shall provide reason for endorsing or rejecting the recommendation of DMB. 
the ia on receipt of recommendations of uh, uh, district medical board or state medical board may further proceed as per law we must know uh, some things uh, how much to charge on fee for medical service is the choice of the medical practitioner fee paid for operation also includes post op care doctors will be held responsible for the act of commission or omission of their assistants and non technical staff doctor is not negligent if a patient gets a heart attack while doing a minor operation if a if a drug is prescribed in appropriate dose for appropriate condition and the patient develops a reaction to that drug the drug the doctor is not responsible but if the reaction is not identified and managed in time uh, it may amount to negligence the patient does not follow the instruction then doctor is not negligent finally we continue to live in a fantasy world where we trust the dictum that if we work ethically honestly and compassionately no harm will come to us unfortunately harm has already come as is seen from multiple co judgments uh, penalizing ophthalmologists our association and leaders need to recognize the growing danger and need to take steps to defend the members in in their need of our in their hour of need time has now come to introspect and to factor the cost of litigation and compensations into the cost of surgeries so that uh, we not only benefit the patient but also safeguard the ophthalmologist thank you very good presentation dr shreya we came to know various uh, litigant part of this in this uh, medical legal profession uh, medical legal cases and uh, you have uh, cited very uh, pertinent uh, case study for opening our eyes so you must always write down the duration and come for the follow up so these are the important part for uh, while uh, seeing the patient and if you are treating the patient uh, so excellent presentation and we came to know various new things with this presentation though in this presentation thanks anybody dr pranav ranjan sir a uh, very nice uh, i mean exactly what you said uh, even i came to know a lot of lot of things especially for a children you have to keep the record for 21 years i never yeah. i imagine 21 year is a very very long time how to keep the record unless you keep it electronically so that is uh, one part which is an eye opener the hand par godna godwa dijiyega so very nice very nice bahut acha presentation dr navin kuch bolna cha rahe hain yes navin bol rahe hain many congratulations dr shreya had work hard very sir and regarding the visual acuity i just want to stress that in our college also there is a lot of mistakes while taking the visual acuity most of the patients comes to your just a fall play so we must check the malingering also we never try to write down no pl immediately we should either write down patient denies pl rather than no pl just immediately because if you put the no pl so there may be chances ki you are um, uh, supporting the grievous injury so sometimes most of the patient comes to the you are just government hospital they just have a vested interest of that medical legal part in that case if you write down the no pl there may be chances ki your report is going to be a, and other doctor said that you know he had a vision in that case there may be chances uh, something irregularity will happens mm. regarding the uh, regarding the corneal perforation i have also some suggestion that ki uh, most of the pg student what they put the topical medicine also uh, at the time of perforation also so before repairing it should not be put in the topical medicine try to avoid as much as topical medications in case of ocular trauma rather than just putting only topical a lot of topical medication getting advised by that uh, in case of corneal perforation also and all the different type of perforation also so the take yeah, yeah, message yeah. of today's ah bolle bolle nilesh nahi take home message of today's seminar just summarize dr documentation be ready for the medico legal part of these post traumatic cases at any point of life and a long follow up long follow up this is very important i mean proper examination that every importance has been given proper documentation that requires because of the medico legal aspect of trauma cases management will follow as per the examination and a long term follow up 
I think yeah. these are the important things which uh, yeah. have come up with the seminar. Anything or uh, any other panelist would like to add upon anything on this? Take home message. Dr. Nagendra. Dr. Nagendra. Yes, tell me. First of all, let me congratulate Sudhir Boss, ARC, and Boss for choosing this topic for today's webinar. Sudhir Boss, I will say what I will say, I will say what I will say, I will say what I will say. I feel that ocular trauma is one topic that has been slightly ignored by almost all of us. Many of us are not even prepared to handle these cases in our clinic. And when such a case arise, arises to us, comes to arrives to us, we simply refer them. PMC chale jaiye, IGMS chale jaiye, AIMS chale jaiye. Reason being, perhaps विजुअल प्रोग्नोसिस अच्छा नहीं होगा और उतने समय में तो चार कैटरेक्ट कर लेंगे मेडिकल लीगल इश्यूज माइट बी वन ऑफ द रीजंस और हम जहां भेज देते हैं इनको पीएमसीएच एनएमसीएच आईजीएमएस वहां पे हु आर देयर इन द इमरजेंसी रूम टू मैनेज दीस केसेस आवर पीजीज आवर रेसिडेंट्स एंड व्हाट आर दे इक्विप I can talk about PMCH because I belong to it. No slit lamp, no microscope, no OT, nothing at all. करते क्या हैं फिर हम लोग? Ointment लगा के, pad and bandage कर दो, admit कर लो, next day examination होगा. और अगर Sunday हो गया next day, तो और late. Something should be done regarding this problem also. Ye hamari hi kami hai, hum kaise karein, but ye situation hai. I sincerely hope that all of us will be a little wiser after this seminar. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Rajay, for your nice words. And uh, these are all introspective words for all of us. And the thing which I said that we should be keen to take up cases. Yeah. Prognosis at least of the primary management from... should be given at least before yeah, referring to anything. Yeah, 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 so, if we to... simplify it, first of all, we have to examine the patient. We have to examine the grievousness. We have to see where the injury has been. We have to follow it. And whatever you can do in that situation, you can do it. It's not necessary that you can do everything. It's not necessary that you can do everything. It's not necessary that you can do everything. It's not necessary that you can do it. जो शाम के टाइम चलता है उस समय ओटी नहीं हो तो जो भी हम कर सकते हैं और उसको फिर प्रॉपर टाइम पर या तो हम खुद लेंगे अगर साधन नहीं है तो जो भी उचित जगह होगा वो वहां भेजना है और ये भी मेडिकल लीगल है अगर आप सही समय पर सही जगह नहीं भेजते हैं तो आप नेग्लिजेंट माने जाते हैं yes, yes. और मिनिमम जो आप कर सकते हैं उतना करने के बाद आपको भेजना ये मेरा इसमें एडिश एड करना था लेकिन सभी लोगों ने बहुत अच्छा प्रेजेंटेशन किया बियॉन्ड एक्सपेक्टेशन हम सोच रहे हैं कि आगे और भी लोग इसमें ज्वाइन करेंगे बिल्कुल वेरी नाइस कंपाइलेशन एंड प्रेजेंटेशन गुड प्रेजेंटेशन ऑल द ऑल द पीजीज प्रेजेंटेड वेरी वेल एंड ऑल द वेरी पार्ट ऑफ गुड सबसे बड़ी बात है इतना इंटरेक्टिव डिस्टेंस कम होता है सर हाँ हाँ वी हैव ऑलरेडी इंटरेक्शन हुआ है मोर � तो अब के साथ हम खत्म करते हैं इस चीज को यहीं पे और मैं रिक्वेस्ट अगला टॉपिक नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट मंथ में करेंगे सर दस के बाद आराम से लेकिन हाँ करना इसको रोकना नहीं है नहीं रोकना है सर इंटर कॉलेज क्विज करना है सर अरे हम लोग करना है उसके लिए हेल्प चाहिए होगा पूरा पूरा ऑक्लर ट्रॉमा सीख लिय तो मैं डॉक्टर सुधीर से रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि वो वोट ऑफ थैंक्स दें भाई इन्हीं का टॉपिक था इन्हीं का कंसेप्टुलाइज था किया हुआ और अरेंज किया हुआ सारा कुछ इनका सबसे पहले तो मैं इसके पहले सलील को सर सर कुछ बोल रहे थे सर हाँ इसके पहले हम डॉक्टर सुधीर को कंग्रेचुलेट करते हैं कि इसका कॉन्सेप्ट जो है सो दिया सो फ्रॉम एक्चुअली प्रोफेसर सलील को मैं सबसे ज्यादा धन्यवाद देना चाहूंगा 
कि उन्होंने हमारे रिक्वेस्ट को एक्सेप्ट किया और उसमें बार बार होने वाले चेंज को भी एक्सेप्ट करते हुए अपने बिजी टाइम से समय निकाला मैं फिर से उनको धन्यवाद देता हूं और इसके साथ ही मैं स्पेशली डॉक्टर नंदन डॉक्टर प्रगति डॉक्टर फरत डॉक्टर अली और डॉक्टर श्रेया को मैं धन्यवाद देता हूं जिन्होंने इतना पेन लिया और इस प्रेजेंटेशन को बनाने में और हम लोगों को समझाने में कि ये क्या चीज होता है और इसके साथ ही मैं सभी मॉडरेटर्स और पैनलिस्ट को उनके इनपुट के लिए थैंक यू बोलता हूं एंड आई एम ग्रेटफुल टू बी ओ एस एंड ए आर सी बी ओ एस फॉर दी बी ओ एस मेंबर्स फॉर अलाउंग दिस टॉपिक and i say thank to all the audience for the same reason because they contributed and they were present and listening to the and giving uh, and always giving their inputs and uh, no, last but not least i say thank you to Ast astrazone of thalmix for their support in the event and again thank you to all thank you sir so thank you so much sir thank you for that is all for tonight so we should leave now Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. 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 B